Hi, welcome everyone back to another episode of Direct Access Mixstream. This is episode number five and you are here with me, uh, JD. Thank you again. Welcome to all the viewers who are joining me on this live stream and or those of you who may be also watching the, the replay later on, okay? Right, if you're new to uh, this show, right, to this program, please take a minute, head on down there, you know, uh, leave a like, please share this video and do subscribe to the channel, please, right? Because uh, it's really, really will help to support the channel. And, uh, you know, it, it will really help to encourage me to continue to keep on making brand new content. Talking about content, all right? So, um, besides the weekly mix stream, which I do on every Fridays, we also have two other um, programs, all right? Two other main uh, shows which I upload. So, on Mondays, what I do is a uh, episode, a uh, show called The Song Breakdown, where I take a song. Uh, one of the songs which I've worked before and I usually interview the artist or the producer and we sit down and we listen, we talk about the production process, we talk about, basically it's a walkthrough and a deep dive into the process of how the whole song was created from songwriting, the pre-production, the recording session. We get a chance to really look into the uh, project files as well. We look one by one, we listen to all the different parts and the different elements and we analyze and we talk about it, you know, basically take a trip down memory lane to refresh our, our memories of what happened, you know, you know, uh, what, what, who were the musicians involved, what were the challenges, what were the obstacles. And that's a really, really fun video. So do check it out. I will leave that. That's on Mondays, okay? I'll leave the link to the description to that program uh, down, down below, all right? And every Wednesday, I do a uh, weekly update Wednesday program. So weekly update Wednesday is obviously, you know, I keep you updated. It's kind of like a weekly semi vlogish kind of a thing. Uh, I kind of keep you updated on what's been going on in the studio, you know, what's going on in the um, uh, local music scene, music industry. And I also top it off with a Q&A session, right? So the Q&A session... Um, what I do is we get questions from YouTube, you know, down in the comments, uh, from Facebook, for anywhere, all around social media and all over the internet. I get questions, you know, um, um, and I will try my best to answer them, right, every, every Wednesday. So it can be anything related to um, recording, mixing, music production, music theory, music business, you know, uh, the local music scene anything at all that's re re related to, to, to music, all right? You can always check that out. That's the weekly update when it stays. Okay, right. So um, before I continue, right, uh, I want to give a big shout out to all the patrons. Okay, who are the patrons, right? So let me explain. So the idea of putting out the, of doing this mixed stream program is uh, it's not only just to sort of showcase or to promote, you know, um, uh, my channel, my studio, you know, my work as a producer and as a mixing engineer, but it's also a platform for me to showcase and to promote independent artists, especially when, you know, independents that I'm working with, you know, and showcase their upcoming songs, you know. So those of you who watch this um, episode of Mixstream, you get like a sneak peek, you know, a, a sneak preview, a little teaser of what the song sounds like, okay. But above that, more than that, all right, um, right, back to read it to the, about, about patrons, right. If you sign up, all right, uh, to become a patron, you go to this website, which I've uh, kind of linked down here, as you can see, right, patreon.com slash 2D105. You can sign up to become a patron, right? Uh, for as low as um, $3 a month, which is about 12, 13 ringgit a month, right? Um, you can make just one a contribution for just uh, one month, lah, right? But if you could decide to continue to do it for uh, months to come, that's even more appreciated, okay? So you sign up to become a patron, right? Link down here, right? Patreon.com slash 2D2105. And... Uh, send us a message, send me a message, use this code here, right? Use this code, which you can see right here, right? Mixstream05, so that I know that your contribution and your pledge is going to go to the featured artists, right? So, I mean, mind 50% of the revenue from this live stream, all right, that, that you pledge, that you contribute on, on Patreon, will go in support of the featured artists, okay? 
And uh, of course, the, the remaining 50% uh, helps to support the channel and help us, helps me to keep on making and creating all this content. And who's the featured artist, uh, you may be asking? Well, uh, if you've already seen the thumbnail, you already know who it is. This week's featured artist, right, are uh, two... Is a very, very, very special, right? Very, very special um, artist because it's not just one, but it's two of them, right? It's the husband and wife uh, duo, very, very good friends of mine, amazingly talented singers and songwriters, Velvet Adok and Rich from Estrange. Yay! Hello, okay, give, give them a hand, okay? Um, Please say hi to them. Uh, Rich is currently also uh, in the chat session. You have any questions? You want to say hi to Rich? Okay, hi Rich. Okay, I uh, leave it in the in the chat session, and then Rich will, will get back to you. So remember, uh, and and uh, I'm going to be mixing their brand new upcoming single titled Dunya Baru. Okay, All right. So remember, uh, um, help to support the artists. Help to support. Um, my channel signing up via via Patreon. Okay, let me just do a quick uh, quick break breakdown. All right, um, this song is very special because this was um, recorded and um, written and recorded during the MCO. All right, so um, well, um, so this was all done, all arranged, all the parts, everything that you hear was all. Um, recorded, produced, and programmed, all done by Rich himself, right? On his um, on his uh, MacBook, right? And the great thing is about it is that um, the sounds that you hear, you know, are all using like stock sounds, right? Stock stock samples from from Logic, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, Rich, right? You can type type in the chat and and let me know if I got the details wrong. But if I understand it, this was all done inside Logic and using stock samples. So, okay. So, uh, and not only that, the guitars, right, that you hear in this track were recorded uh, using an acoustic, right? So it's an acoustic with a with a with a with a pickup, just just direct into the interface, okay? Direct into the interface. So uh, I'm going to show you, right, in this mix project, you know, a couple of tips and tricks of how to um, sort of get a more interesting guitar sound out of the acoustic guitar track, right? Uh, of the guitar track and, you know, just transform it into something else, right? I'll show you a little bit of the tips and the tricks that I'm going to use. So these are all, you know, it's possible, you know, even though if you're under lockdown, if you can't get to a studio or the studio is not open, you know, uh, if you're under, you know, a situation of quar quarantine, all right? Um, it's possible to, to be making music, just use the basics of what you have, you know, use the stock sounds, use the stock, stock, uh, stock samples, okay, and um, and and let's see what you're gonna what what what's gonna what's gonna turn out, okay, all right. So now let's not waste any time. Enough uh, of me uh, jibber jabbering and uh, talking too much. Let's take a listen to how uh, the song sounds like, okay. So. Uh, those who've watched the program, you all always know that, you know, first things first is that we always want to take a listen to the entire song. We want to, you know, be able to, instead of diving straight away into the individual parts and soloing all the parts, take a step back. We want to look at the big picture of us, all right? So what I did before this was um, I've already obviously prepped the session and everything, as you can see, all right? These are all the drum parts, kick, snare, claps hats, toms, overheads, bass, a couple of piano tracks, guitar tracks, just one or two uh, keyboard synth parts, and just two vocal tracks, all right? So super, super simple uh, production, not uh, not uh, ultra super complicated, okay? So first things first, let's just take a quick listen, all right, uh, of the overall rough mix which I've pulled up, all right? This is just Faders up only, okay? Uh, faders up balance, no compression, no EQ, no effects, no nothing yet, okay? So it's a raw, rough mix. Let's take a quick listen, right? And I'll get to you in the chat. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri Tell 
suatu hari Aku, kamu, kita semua tempuhi Walau apapun yang terjadi Right Second verse Susah senang Reprise of the verse. Shaker. Veronica, thanks for joining in the mixed stream. All right, okay, cool. Sounding good, man. You know, uh, that's a really, really cool song. I, as a, uh, as um, Rich explained in the chat, as he explained it to me, you know, this was a song that um, uh, he and his wife wrote in response to, you know, obviously the current situation that we are all living in. You know, very, very strange times under the COVID-19 pandemic. So, right, uh, I do do hope that um, you guys are, make, make sure that you all are staying safe. You know, remember to always, always wash your hands. If you go out, uh, make sure you practice your social distancing and wear a face mask if you're going outside. Okay? All right, take care. So, now, um, hello. All right, thanks again for all of those who are joining in. Okay, remember, please say hi in the chat, okay? Say hi in the chat. Um, um, Rich is in the is in the chat. So, talk, talk. Uh, if you have any questions, anything you want to ask him, you know, what's been going on, what you had for dinner today, uh, who cooks at home during the uh, MCO? Do you do you cook or does Velvet do all the cooking? Right, I I, I would want to know as well. Okay, <laughs> okay, right. So what you heard just now was the uh, rough mix of the whole song, and 
uh, it's really good, you know, to to hear a song which is really upbeat, which is really really cheerful, because some of the songs that you know we've heard, you know, that people have been releasing and writing during this MCO have been, oh, it's always been very very sad, super super depressing songs, and it's a breath of fresh air to be able to hear something that's you know upbeat and and happy and and ex- exciting lah. Okay, so. Uh, where do we start? Okay, so let's start by... Let's just mute everything else first, okay? Let's just mute all the tracks and we're gonna get right into the mix. Okay, cool. So, uh, those of you who have been following me and watching the episodes would know some of my procedures. Lah. First thing that I'm going to do, first of all, let's take a look. Let me just double check my master's uh, stereo. Okay, I'm actually using a slightly different template, right? Uh, a brand new template. And yes, I've promised to do the mixed template video like for the past one month already, but there's been so much other stuff going on, uh, a lot of other videos to make and to 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 pre-make and to edit and and all that that I've haven't had time, right? Uh, but I promise that's gonna come up really 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 soon. Okay, so basically a very quick look at the stereo stereo mix bus. Um, I'll explain in detail later, but let me just double check first. All right, okay, all good there. Okay, so first things first, what I want what I want to do is I want to set my initial level. So as you all know. Right, to so set initial levels to make sure that your mix has a proper headroom, you know, so it does not clip your master bus. All right, you don't want that to happen. Uh, at the same time, you also don't want your levels to be too low, you know, that when later when you send it up for mastering, when it brings up all the level to to uh, release to radio broadcast uh, um, uh, level that you don't inadvertently bring up all the noise and all the hiss as well. Okay, so let's start with. Good old, uh, my favorites that I put in all that I always use in almost every single mix. All right, um, I always start with the tape emulation and console emulation plugins first. So let's put an instance of that. Okay, let it load. Okay, so let's just take a quick look into this. Right, so the first thing that we have here is the virtual tape machine, as usual, by Slate Digital. This emulates, um, this models the uh, signal path going through a 24-track um, analog tape machine. Going into an instead of virtual mix rack, and in virtual mix rack, I have the virtual channel. All right, virtual channel here is going into the uh, API and going into a FG73 preamp. So this is a um, emulation of the Neve 1073. Okay, I'm, I want to do, do something a little bit different now. All right. Um, usually, what I prefer, I always like to use the USA. Right, the A setting. The A setting is an emulation of the uh, API console. Right. So to me, that's actually the like the most the the cleanest um, uh, sound of all the consoles. But I want to do something a little bit different. Right, uh, because we are using um, a lot of stock samples, a lot of program sounds, a lot of like direct DI, DI guitars. Maybe what we need to do is you know, uh, help to inject a little bit more of flavor, a little bit more color in, into the mix. So, in this case, let's go for something different, right? Let's go for the Brit. 4K E. So 4K here is right. Um, the SSL 4000. Uh, I go for the E series, right? Because the E series is a slightly older SSL. Uh, a little bit more character, a little bit more slightly, you know, a uh, grittier sounding, you know, um, compared to let's say the G, because the G is like a, a newer version, and you know, it's a lot more cleaner than than the US A. So let's go with this for this song. All right, all right. So let me check on the master as well. The stereo bus, actually, sorry. Okay, see, I have this here as well. Let me switch that also to the 4K E setting. Yes, there we go. All right. Okay, I'll explain about the mix, the 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 master bus, the mix bus later on. So let's start with the kick drum. Let's set the initial level. So what I'm trying to look for is. I do not want what I want is the kick drum to sort of peak at about minus 12, okay? That's my level, all right? Uh, if you prefer to, 
right? You might not be able to see this because this is off screen, the meter is off screen, all right? All right, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the kick to sort of peak at about minus 12 dB, all right? Um, you can always peak it louder if you want, all right? Or a little higher, a little lower, there's no right, no wrong, but I use minus 12 dB as my reference so that I know that if I, once I balance everything else relative to that, to that kick drum, everything should sound pretty much in place, okay? Let's put it about minus 10, let me tweak it. Okay, a little bit too much. Sweet, okay, cool. All right, so it's peaking at about minus 13, lah, all right? So that, that's pretty good enough, right? That's because if I need to bump it up later anyway, I have still have all the available headroom. Okay, let's head down. Let's do a high pass about 20, okay? High pass at 20 just to get rid of all the subs. Now, mm, I feel tempted to reach for the EQ and EQ the heck out of, out of everything, but sometimes that might not be the right approach, okay? So let's not uh, let's not do too much first. Let's just work on the overall balance of the of the the drums and let's see see what 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 comes out of it. Okay, let's let's play this little section here. Okay, maybe the the front part, the first chorus where it comes in. Let's bring in the snare. We don't need all, I don't think we need everything below 80, yeah, maybe below 85, yeah, that's fine, okay? Let's go with the snare, hi-hat, okay, let's, let's take out all the low end, we don't really need it. Okay, cool. What I want to do is maybe I want to monofy the snare for the time being, right? Because there is a little bit of uh, reverb on it. Let me just bring it, put it up to mono first, and then maybe I will add the reverb, uh, reverb later. All right? Let me try and let's do that again one more time. Okay, yeah. For me, that sounds a little bit more more solid, right? It sounds a little bit more solid to me to have the snare direct in the center right because now it kind of sounds um, um, a little bit spread out spread out of the slightly okay so let's just let's just modify it okay so uh, it's not necessary to to uh, do this I could also do this actually right and maybe I'll do this instead this is much easier okay let me just select all the um, the snare let me select the snare track okay let me go into audio let me process into this one stereo flip and what I want to do is right there are several options here I want to go into this mode and change the mode to merge so what this does is that it merges and it sums the left and right so essentially you're going to get a uh, a uh, mono mono track in the end okay all right so your DAW whatever DAW that you're using you know Logic Pro Tools whatever should have something like this uh, as well okay let's apply and there you go it's done so this should be mono already okay yep okay i feel that we need to this snare needs to be a little bit more excitement so let's try and let's go with something crazy let's go with this okay right again because when you're using samples, when you're using you know stock samples and all that, or, or anything that that's programmed, a lot of it's too perfect. You know, sometimes it's too too perfect, and and um, the beauty of why you know when we record, let's say using live drums, live instruments, you know, and and the excitement is all there because there's always that element of wrongness you know there's that always that element of imperfection so let's introduce you know let's just bring back some of that imperfection into the mix again so 
All right, I'm going to put this, the monster. Well, monster is basically um, the 1176 on the all buttons in mode, okay? So it's called the extreme dynamic processor. Let's see how it sounds. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, let's bring that in. Let's bring a bit of punch back. See? Uh, yeah, kind of wimpy. Let's bring that in. All right. Sweet. Okay. Let's slow down the attack. Let's bring the release. Nope, too much. Okay. Mm, too much. Let's just have the release at the fastest, lah, okay? So I don't want to kill the transient too much. I just want to squeeze out all that energy out of the, the snare drum. Can I pass filter? Don't really need it, okay? Because this is a this is a kick. Yep. Sweet. I'm loving it, you know. Just applying that has really given the snare drum a lot more. Uh, lit lot more, make it more garang, you know, a little bit more spicy over there, okay? Sweet, okay, cool. Next thing, let's bring in the... What else do we have in here, okay? Right, not much, not much, okay? Let's let's just sing these toms, okay? Let's do the same for the... Okay, let's do the same for the toms. 4KE drums, let's bring the 4KE drums, okay? Let's just look at the toms. Right. Okay, cool. Let me just loop that. Let's loop the toms very quickly. Okay, now in this case, uh, there are many ways that there are, there are just other plugins that you also can can use like, besides uh, besides uh, besides what what we have in here. Let's go with let's go with another one. All right, this is Pulsar. All right. Uh, this came out free, but you can actually you can actually um, um, check it out. I'm not sure whether is it still 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 out for free. So this also does the same thing. It's similar to the monster, except this is being developed by by a different company. It also you know simulates the 1176 with doing all the uh, all button squash thing. Let's see how it sounds. Let's bring it up. Let's give it a hundred percent mix. Okay, a bit too much. It sounds too compressed now. Bypass. Bit more output. Okay, just gives it a little bit more again, bit more, bit more grit, a little bit more energy. In fact, let me just drive it, give it a bit more saturation. Let's see how it goes. Let's bring it all the way up. Hmm. I like that. See, I, I kind of like, uh, usually what we said is about 50. So 50 is kind of the, the cleanish kind of a level. But it's kind of useful to sort of drive this a little bit harder. You know, just give it a bit of that. Okay, a bit too much, I think. Just that slight bit of saturation on the on the preamp, right? Okay, let me just check the EQ. Okay, there's one kind of annoying resonance here. To that note. There you go, around there. Just about 280. Well, that's the that's a very typical and very common um, um, frequency range for toms uh, between 300, 350, between 300, 400 hertz. You know, you always get a little bit of that uh, resonance. Let's bring that down. Okay, let's bring that down. And uh, let me add one of these things which I love to use on toms. All right, this is a plugin. Right, called the Bark of Dog. Right, you've you've seen it before. I've used it on um, on my other episodes. Okay, 
so what this does is like uh, it helps to um, um, sculpt and generate the the extra low end. It helps you to squeeze that 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 bigness and size out of out of almost anything. You can use it on drums. You can use it on um, bass. You can use it on yeah. You can even use it on uh, on vocals. So what it does is let me try. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to try and sweep and find where that frequency is. Okay, let's bring it down. A bit more. That's a bit too low. About 90, I think. About 90. Am I right? Right, yeah, yeah, see, so it's about there, it's about 90, okay, cool, right. So, I always try to practice my practice my ears. What I'm actually trying to do, uh, let me explain it to you again, all right? So, what I'm trying to do is, I want to try and find where the, that, that, that center frequency is. So, when I started a little bit higher, right, as you can see that, uh, it, it kind of, it's thin, you see, it thins out. And then I want to hear the frequency where... It starts to get bigger, you get all the low end back in until the point where if you keep going down, it doesn't improve it anymore, right? Uh, obviously, you know, uh, you guys are recommend that you should be listening to this on a good pair of either speakers, right? If you can get or a good pair of headphones. If you're listening it on your, you know, on your smartphone and your, on your speakerphone, you are not going to be able to, to hear it, lah, okay? Okay, let me just okay. So let's let's move in, move on. So this helps to add a bit of bigness and size to it. Classic. Let me change the modes. Oh, that's nicer. That's bigger. That's even bigger. Let's go with combo. I go with passive, right? Okay. So passive here is is a uh, emulating the behavior of the uh, the 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 the, the, the pull tag EQ. Okay, cool. Let's listen back to the drums again. Let's just add more of this. Okay. Yeah, that's too much. All right, that's... Okay, let's, let's keep... I'll keep the kick drum fairly clean. Let's see what about the snare. Sweet. All right, so I am driving and saturating the preamp a little bit, you see, as you can see by the uh, the flashing light in here. So don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid of uh, flashing warning lights. Yes, there are certain times where you do not want it to go into the red, right? Um, those would be in, situ in, in situations where, uh, you know, when you are recording, Right, you want to always make sure that whenever you're recording stuff, you do not want to clip your inputs. And also the same thing when you are uh, exporting and bouncing down, then we will make sure that your master um, doesn't clip. Right, but in between, any, anywhere in between, you know, uh, be af don't don't be afraid, don't be scared, be adventurous. Right, go and try and drive drive it and 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 do 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 crazy things. Okay, be be brave, be bold, be adventurous. Right. So uh, one thing I always say about um, audio engineering while I put in the um, about recording, mixing and mastering is that, well, I joke about it quite, quite a lot, you know, saying that mm, uh, the reason why, you know, uh, audio engineering uh, doesn't pay very well is, <laughs> OK, is because, right, here, 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 this is my, my rationale, all right? You see, in audio engineering, if we kind of make a mistake, if you screw up a calculation, you do a mistake, one good thing is nobody gets hurt, nobody dies, all right? Okay, so that's one good thing about, about, about audio engineering and re recording and mixing. Not the same, you cannot say the same for other forms of engineering though. Civil engineering, aeronautical engineering, obviously there, you know, if you make a mistake in your calculations, that can get somebody hurt or worse, all right? It can cost people's lives okay so i digress let's go back to let's go back to uh let's go back to the mix okay so this is going into the second part of the song let's just check it out all right let's bring in the overheads sweet 
Okay. Okay, right, cool. I just want to point out a couple of things. Eh? All right. Uh, so first of all, uh, if you guys notice that the when I play this section, notice where the hi hat is, right, and how the toms um the tom roll goes in the stereo field, right? Listen to where the tom, the hi hats are. Okay, maybe I just solo solo the toms first, right, in case you weren't couldn't couldn't hear it. Dun, 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 right, so you have the high tom on this side, right. And the uh, low, low and the low tom and the floor tom on this side, All right? And let's listen to the hi hat as well. Can you guys tell me where it's coming from? Can you guys tell me where it's coming from? First person to uh, tell me where the uh, um, where where the uh, hi hat is in the chat session, uh, we'll get a uh, we'll get a shout out, <laughs> right? Okay. Which side? Left or right? Come on, come on. Any answers? No one? Okay, very, 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 very uh, quickly. Right? You, you give me, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll explain why later while I proceed with this. Okay, now let's go on to this section where the claps come in. Okay, same thing. I feel that the claps just needs all that energy. We need to bring out all that energy and excitement. Okay, so okay, so now I showed you a couple of plugins which I use, all right, which are compressors. Now, um, obviously those you need to 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 buy, but you can also check this out, right? What I'm gonna put in here is the Clang Helm. Uh, is these uh are these uh um. Uh, compressors from this company called Clang Help. So let's pull this out. This is the DC183. Right. This uh is you can check it out, all right? Um they have actually a couple of, of compressors that they have. One is a DC183. They also have another one here called the IVG I2, right? So these are all with slightly different flavors. And another one that they have here is the where is it? Where's the clang? Oh, not clef clang, clang helm, the MJUC right, uh, junior right, MJUC junior. In fact, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this. Now, the great thing about these clang helm compressors is that they are free. And who's the one first one to give the answer? Uh, uh, Rich, you are the mo you are the moderator. You're the artist. You cannot lie. Okay. First one with the correct answer is Eldrin. Eldrin. Okay, cool. Very, 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 very cool, man. That's right. So, uh, the hi hat is on the right. So what it tells you is that we are actually listening to the drums from the uh, which perspective? Can anyone give me an answer? Okay, okay. I won't waste time, right? So when you hear the hi hat is coming from the. Uh, um, right hand side as you are, are viewing it from here from here as you are listening and, and watching what it mean, what it tells you is that you are um, viewing the drums right imagine that you're looking at the drum set right you are viewing the drums from the audience perspective because the hi-hat is on the right hand okay uh, normal left-handed uh, right-handed drummer la. hi hat will be on the uh, left hand side for the drummer so for you as an audience you'll be on the right. So when the toms, when you listen to the toms, right, it also go from high to low, from right to left, right. So you need to make sure that when you mix, you have these perspectives. They need to, uh, you know, they must have a conti You know, you need to have that continuity, right. It'll be very. It's a kind of kind of weird if you have your, <clears throat> let's say, the stereo image of your overheads. You know. Uh, flip the or totally the other way around. So in overheads, the overheads is like eight, the opposite side of the hi hats. It will sound very very confusing. Okay, so um, in this case, the the samples and that is being used is coming from an audience perspective, which is cool, which which is which is uh, which is perfectly fine. All right, I personally prefer to um, use a drummer's perspective. Okay. Uh, because for me, uh, I always like to when I listen to a track, you know, especially if I'm listening on on headphones or, or anything. When I'm listening to a song, I always want to like be the air drummer. I would like to air drum to it, 
So when I'm doing the air drums, I'm listening to 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 the song. I'm playing the drums along along with the song. So when I, you know, every time you get to the fills, you get to the tom fills in the song. You know, when I'm doing the air drumming, I want to sort of follow and, you know, I I I want to sort of follow and and play along. So when I do a tom roll, da 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 da, you know, so it's going to be going from left to right. So that is coming from a drummer's perspective, lah. Okay. Well, talk about that in in an, in a, in another time. Let's let me just move on first. Okay. So back to where the clap is, and I was telling you. What I was going to use, I'm going to use the MJU C Junior. Now all these are free. Okay, let let's uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Now, let's turn this off for us again. First thing, let's add a bit of excitement. Let's drive it, drive it. I feel it can be even more aggressive though. So let me switch to another one. All right, let's switch to this guy. Let's switch to the London. All right, so this is coming from the Virtual Tube Collection. Okay, let's saturate this a little bit further. Push. Try that again. Console. Okay, tell you what, let's put both. <laughs> Saturated, yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, obviously, it's it's obviously number one. It is making it slightly louder, but it's also kind of uh, you know really um all that all that preamp and preamp saturation that are adding there is adding all that energy and it's also compressing it a little bit. Right, so let's add it in there. Let me control the output so that you know we can make an equal volume comparison. My pass. Bring it down. Three. Again, let's go in a loop. My pass. Engage. Let's turn it down. Four dB. Yeah, see, see, without it, you know, to me, it it loses all that 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 uh, energy without all the uh, uh preamp saturation that I'm ha have having in there. Okay. Uh, not only that, I feel with claps, I always love to add a bit of uh, little add a bit of EQ to it, and let's put the EQ before the preamp again. I'm trying to drive and saturate saturate it a little harder. At about eight hundred k, let's see what happens. Woohoo! We see that's adding a lot of body to it. It's adding a lot of body to the clap. Sweet. Okay, I like it. I like it. Right. Uh, probably bring it. It starts to introduce a little bit of that that low end. So maybe. To bring this up to about three hundred. Okay, I don't really need that. Okay, so back to the MJUCR, which I mentioned. Honestly, I'm actually very happy with with what it is already, without even adding some compression. But why not? Let's just do it. Okay, let's see how how it sounds. Okay, so this is very super super simple. The Clang Helm MJUC Junior. All right. Uh, again, it's free. I, I'll leave the link to some of all these plugins we are used in the description uh, below, lah. Okay. Right. You check back in about let's say a couple of hours because it takes time for um, YouTube to uh, process the whole live stream. All right. Uh, to to process the whole live stream. Check back in a couple of hours. You know everything will be down there in the in the description. So uh, super super simple. It's only got two controls. Could you compress? How much compression you want to apply? And it's got a uh the makeup right makeup here mean the make makeup gain is it because compression what it does it it applies gain reduction so it makes the the level a little bit lower so you want to make up you want to compensate for that gain reduction by using the makeup control uh time constant super super simple right uh you either have a fast all right uh, attack release or you have a slow or you have an auto mode so let's just see which one works the best okay let's start with let's start with the fast one first okay let's see.
Ooh. You can hear that? That's really smacking it. Let's bring some makeup. Bypass. Wow, what, what I really like about this, as you can hear, right, when you bypass it, right? Okay, and when I engage it, it brings up all that ambience, right? All the low level ambience. So again, adding a lot more energy. See, this one is very dry and the, the reverb tail is like very fast, very short. Wow, see this one, and then it just blooms a little bit uh, longer, right? The reverb tail, all that ambience, the sustain, all gets, gets brought up. Let's switch it to slow, though. I just want to compare and see. Slow. Eh. Okay, when it's too slow, then it acts too slow. Auto. Auto's not bad. I prefer fast. Okay, all right. I prefer I prefer it having a slightly faster attack and uh, um, this should be attack or release. Uh. Again, I'm not sure. Right, I have to go and look into the uh, the documentation. See whether does it just this just apply to only the attack or does it apply to the release as well? Okay, all right, cool. Let's leave it. So you know, from simple claps, let's listen to how the claps sound again. All right, in 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 solo. Da, 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 in solo, right, with. Let's take out the processing when you bypass. Meh. Okay, cool, yeah, see? I've just brought up, brought up and added so much more energy and, and life, life to, to those claps. Okay, let's uh, check out again, back and see, all right? I'm gonna see how it transitions into this section. Yeah. Okay, great. I want to do, let's do the same thing with the symbols and uh, overhead. Okay, this goes into this section with the uh, second half of the chorus with the right symbol. Let's listen to it in solo first. Okay, once again, let's bring up, let's add more vibe, more energy into it. Let's bring this MJUC Jr. again. Let's go with fast. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's loop it. Ooh. Let's bring the makeup. Try it one more time. Come bypass. See, so again, it's now it's bringing up the right symbol, so it's a lot more, you know, again bringing up a lot more of the, the detail in in the symbol track. Okay, let's listen to it one more time. Sweet, okay, cool, very, 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 very cool. So what I like, okay, uh, on the drums, let me again, let me switch this down to 4KE, all right? Let's do everything with the SSL 4000E uh, emulation. API 2500 for the drums. Okay, let's listen to how it goes, all right? Let's bring up the attack. Sweet, all right. 
So about 0.1 millisecond, so that's quite a quite a fast attack. Okay, so let's just leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Sweet. All right. Cool. So now what I'm gonna do? Let's add a little bit of uh, uh, reverb. Okay. So um. What I love to use for a lot of the, my uh, drum reverbs is a, I love to use like convolution reverbs, okay? So convolution uses uh, impulse responses and uh, IRs, okay? All right, so, oh, by the way, all right, uh, I will put in the link if you head to my Facebook, uh, if you head to my Facebook, the Studio 2105 Facebook, you can go to um in one of the, the the menus above there you see the home you see services you go to the one that says email sign up under more email sign up if you sign up to uh my newsletter i'm you know giving out some uh cool free goodies some free downloads right so i have my number one uh snare samples which i've recorded like over like the 10 15 years right i have like free snare samples that you can download for free I have my entire uh, reverb impulse response library, IR library. You can also down that, download that from free for free as well. And coming up real soon, I also have like a free multi-track from a, from a, a band that I worked with, right? So there's like free multi-tracks. There's a free impulse response library um, and f a free snare samples, right? So I'll leave again. I'll leave it down in the description below. Come back later, you know, in, in a couple hours, right? And 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 check it out and how you can uh, access and how can you download all this free content. So back to what a convolution reverb is, right? So what it does is that it uses uh, impulse responses, right, to um, sort of uh, emulate and simulate an actual physical space uh, or a particular device. So you know, um, you talk about IRs a lot in guitar amps. <clears throat> but it's also something that's applied with uh, da, 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 applied with um, effects units, reverb units, uh, modulation effects units. So you can always run uh, IRs, right? So I can do give you a quick glimpse of what I have, right? right? Impulse responses from all these devices, even tight Eclipse, H2000, Lexicon 480, Lexicon 960, PCM, da da da, Sony DRE. TC, Electric 6000, Bricasti, Yamaha, SPX 990, and many, 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 many more. So many, man. Okay, so let's go with... Uh, let's go with a good old Lexicon 480, okay? Let's go with a small wood room. Let's go with a large wood room, okay? Large. Let's go large, man. Let's go big. Let's go super-sized. Okay, and let's see, okay... Let's add a bit of a... Uh, I'm going to make it simple, right? Let's just apply that reverb on the entire drum bus. Let's see how it, that's how it, how it sounds, okay? Right. So usually, you know, if you want to be, you know, um, with either like, oh, just put reverb only on the snare or on the... Oh, it's, let's be a little bit adventurous. Let's see how it, that's how it goes. We, we put the reverb on everything. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, man. So, you know, you know, uh there's some people who say, "Oh, don't don't ever put the reverb on the entire uh kick drum drum bass because, you know, you, you're going to get all that that solo end." Yes, uh you you might, you know, you might get all that, but what I do is I always kind of always EQ the reverb uh post anyway. So, you got uh what I do here is with the reverb um, high pass filter at 200 so you know it doesn't um, result in all the mud la, and all the muddiness right and then you know I also kind of uh, low, um, low pass everything at about 10k so let me just play that section again alright okay there's a bit of red ringing about 1k yeah see you can hear that so that's a, that's a very kind of a dissonant uh, resonance ringing there so that can be you know what what happens if you apply 
you know, uh, reverb to like a whole bunch of drums. Uh, you know, it might be exciting some of these other frequencies. The reverb, you know, might be uh, exciting all these frequencies. So you might have to EQ it post just just to bring it down. Okay, who else is in the chat, man? Oh, hello, hi, uh, Zach. And uh, thanks for joining in. Zach is uh, one of our patrons, so very, very, very big shout out and very big thank you, right? Because um, you really help to uh, support the channel. So again, if you are, uh, if you just joined in and you just viewed this, you want to su uh, help support my channel and also help support the featured artists, go to patreon.com right now slash studio 2105. You can see the link here, right? Egg, go here and out beyond the camera. Uh, remember, if you want to support um, uh, uh, this week's uh, um, featured artist, which is um, who are Velvet and Rich, as strange, right, and their brand new song, use please mention and 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 uh, send send a message and use the code mixstream 5 Okay, fifty percent of the revenue, right? That's 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 coming from the uh, patron from your subscription will go to the featured artist. Okay, that's the drums, man. Okay, cool. So we've. Uh, Added all that energy, all that excitement into the drums, okay? And let's go now next to the bass, okay? So, it's all about the bass, right? Let's listen to the bass. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, this was also uh, Rich, and maybe Rich can um, um, uh, um, clarify. This is, uh, the bass was also uh, programmed in Logic, right? Using stock Logic sounds, okay? Oh, hi, Rosalith. Rosalith. Thanks for joining in, man. Right. Oh, by the way, Rosalith, I'm going to be featuring these guys on an upcoming episode of Song Breakdown. So stay tuned, okay? All right. Subscribe, right? Uh, share this video and you'll be updated on all the upcoming, upcoming content. Okay. All right. But today it's about Rich and Velvet. Sweet. Okay, cool. Now, so, uh, again, because this is... Um, um, okay, thanks for clarifying, Rich, right? So, yes, so this was also use, using um, um, uh, stock logic sounds. Let's, again, let's, um, let's give it a bit more life, a little bit more uh, energy, right? Because... Um, because ah, it's not really, you know, just using program sounds, you know, it's not really, really uh, kicking it now. So what I'm going to do is let's duplicate this. Uh, all right. I have, uh, let's duplicate the bass. And let me rename this first. Let's give this one, let's call this bass amp. Right. So you can sort of guess where I'm going with this. Okay. I'm going to be using an amp simulator. So what I have got in here is from Plugin Alliance. Let's put in the Ampeg B15. So the Ampeg B15 is the very, very famous flip top, Ampeg flip top. These are uh, licensed, um, licensed um, um, uh, models from Ampeg, you see, uh, developed by Brainworks. So let's see, okay. La da 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 da. Uh, the Ampeg B15, the Porter Flex is referred to as the most recorded bass amp in history, right? Uh, it's it's what they, they refer to it, lah, right? So it's an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, uh, bass amp. So as you can guess it, let's run that clean DI right, through this amplifier just to give it a bit of grit. Uh, de -de 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 -de. Let's go with the, let's go with the 1966 channel first, 1966 bias. Let's see how it sounds, okay? Let's see whether is it loud or not. I hope it's not too loud. Okay, let me bring it down. Okay. Okay, it's a bypass. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so let's just bump it up. Let's just drive it. Yeah, let's bump it, drive it up a bit so that get a bit of that uh, saturation over there. Let me compensate down with the power soak. Yeah. So I'm overdriving. I'm bringing a little bit of 
overdrive and dirt into this uh, bass, into the bass sound, okay? Try this time. Ooh. Yeah, all right? It sounds a bit wrong on its own, okay? All right? Let's just crank it up to 11. Sweet. Okay. Okay, maybe tighten this up a little bit so it doesn't distort all the super, super low end. That's okay. Okay, cool. Very, very cool. So we can also switch the different um, amp cabinets. So now it's a... This is like the standard uh, B15 cab with the ribbon, right? With the ribbon, with the ribbon, with the ribbon. Let's just try and see how an 8x10 would sound like. A bit too clean. Let's go with a 4x10. Too honky. A bit too honky. So a good mid-range though, but a bit too honky. Let's go with... This is also the B15, but with a different mic. Da -da -da. D112. I like this. <sighs> you know what? It, it's, it's very funny. Every time you go through, I'm sure all of you can really, really relate to this. When you're going through all your, let's say your 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 presets, your 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 sound libraries, your sound banks, you are trying to look and you search for that solve for that perfect sound. Okay, you pick the first one, all right? You pick that first one, okay? You pick that very first sound. Okay, you then you play it back. You know, you listen to it in context. Okay, then you go and switch and you select another sound. Hmm. Right, then you go through all your presets trying to find which sound. Okay, this one sounds good. Eh, another one doesn't sound so good. Ah, next one doesn't sound so good. Once you go through that whole process, in the end, you, you can guess where I'm going at. La. You can guess where I'm going at. In the end, it's always that very first sound which, you know, uh, seems to seems to work the best. La. Okay, so... so it's happening in here. I, for me, for me, you know, I just love how the uh, the, the very first one, which is the uh, same cabinet, you know, the B15 cabinet uh, with a ribbon mic and with a bit of EQ in it. So let's just stick with it, okay? Don't don't have to spend so much time going over it. So now uh, we have that, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna blend it in, okay? Okay, right. Actually, before that, before I blend it in, as you can see, the amp, the amp track, you know, has a little bit more distortion, a little bit more grid in it. But before I do that, I want to double check something. Okay. Now, because uh, because when you are sometimes du duplicating and you're molting all these tracks, it's it's actually sometimes possible that some of the plugins, all right, the delay compensation, uh, when they report the, the delay compensation. It's uh, not really, not really accurate, so to speak. So that sometimes when you have slightly different um, uh, plugin chains, like say, like in this case, like in the bass, I'm uh, having this, these two plugins. But then when I go with the bass amp, I have these three. You know, the extra amp simulator. So sometimes with it might not report the delay compensation properly. So I have to, you know, always check. So what I do is, um, right. Uh, it's a tool which I use to check um, phase, all right? And it's called waves in phase. There are many ways of other doing of doing that as well, okay? Um, but this is the one which I'm going to use, lah. Okay, uh, you can use it when checking phase between the drums, between overheads, between if you're multi micing something, you can always use this tool to check phase. So why is it so important? Because obviously, when something is not, you know, uh, your phase coherency is not phase aligned, you can get phase cancellation, okay? So phase cancellation, very, very, very important thing. Everyone who's, you know, producing, who's doing home recording, anything like, uh, go ahead and read up what phase cancellation is, what, what phase is, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I have, uh, I've sent all the bases, the original DI base, the clean base, along with the uh, amp base to the subgroup. So I've put this uh, in phase, I strapped it across the uh, subgroup, line, okay? So this is in phase stereo there's also a mono mode all right so but this is stereo because i'm comparing two different sources so i'm going to pan one to the left pan one to the right and okay, okay. oh 
okay, why is it going? I, sorry, one to the left, this one to the left, this one to the right, okay? Now, for real, behave. Okay, so it's a cool stereo sound now. Okay, but it's not really what, what we're going for, right? So now, once it's there, uh, what I want to do is we start to capture it and what the plugin is going to do is that it's going to analyze the audio from both the left channel, the first channel and second channel. Okay, let's set it on capture, play. You'll analyze it for a couple of seconds and give you the result. Okay, so what you're going to do here is inside this uh, display, what we can do is we can zoom in and you can see, look at the waveform, right? So, uh, as you can sort of see a, a couple of things, you can see that the peaks and the throws, right? Right, where the peaks and the dips are, they're kind of not really matching now, right? So the top is the clean DI and the bottom is the uh, amp signal. So this is this can be caused when it's, when it's running through, running, when it's running through these amp sims, lah, okay? So when the waveform here is kind of going up in a positive, the one on base amp is going down negative. So it might be some kind of phase cancellation going on, right? Right? There is some, definitely some. But uh, let's see whether is it is it good or or bad thing. So first thing I want to do is let's just flip this phase switch. We can flip it 180 degrees. Let's see what happens. Okay, interesting. All right. Uh, I'm gonna zoom it out a little bit. Because what I suspect is actually, it's not the, right, okay, I got it now, I got it now, right. What happens is that, uh, what happens is that because it's running through that amp sim, it has added a little bit of extra latency to the, uh, that, that track, right, the bass amp track is slightly delayed. So actually what happens, you can sort of see here a little bit more clearly, is that, you know, this guy is supposed to match up with this, and this peak was supposed to match up with this. So let's do that, okay? So uh, what I like to do uh, is I would actually delay the original clean signal. And there's nothing wrong. You can also add, you can also advance this forward if you want to, right? But I have a preference to actually uh, sort of delay the clean signal. So here is where we go. Right, so when I'm doing this, I want you to pay attention to this little uh, meter here. This is the correlation meter. So uh, the correlation meter in the middle is obviously zero, all right? Uh, when it goes to the right, you get a positive correlation, right? So positive correlation here means that it's it's good. It's all good, right? But when it goes to the yellow, all right, when it goes to the left, the yellow, you get the negative correlation, which means that there's quite a lot of cancellation going on. So what kind of what what kind of immediately told me that that this is kind of uh, in the right track is because I immediately I saw that it's already positively correlating, right? You get like a point point one seven uh, value over here. So this means that all right, um, it's in the right direction. Cause see when I flip it, oh, it it goes the other way. You get a negative point one seven. So uh, that's not that's not good. Right, so let's delay this, and when I delay the clean um, bass track, watch and pay attention to what happens to the correlation meter, okay? All right, so do, do, here we go. And it's going further, further into the positive value. Wow, and it's going all the way to minus 56. And you get to a point, and you get to a point where you it starts decreasing again. So... How do you know where to get the the, the optimum and the best um uh phase phase correlation phase coherency? Let's look for right. Let's look for the value where you get the maximum. 0.57 and after that oh it goes back to 0.56. Okay cool. 0.57 in between here so it's about 2.58 milliseconds. Uh, let's take a listen to it and see how it sounds. Okay, right. So let's bear this in mind. Let's keep this in mind. Two point five eight. It's very important, not just to rely on numbers, but also to use our ears, lah. Okay. Let's remember this, uh, Bear this in mind. The delay is two point five eight milliseconds. Okay. Now let's bypass the effect. Okay. Let's bypass the effect. 
So remember, 2.58 milliseconds is the magic number. So let's go to the, uh, in this, in Cubase, we have the inspector. But uh, in uh, your own DAW, you probably have something uh, like this, right, where you can uh, introduce the track delay, okay? So track delay. Uh, and some DAWs don't have this built into the channel strip, uh, but you have to use like an, another plugin. You can use a delay plugin, you can use like a, a track delay, um, sample delay plugin. You can insert it and you can also do the same thing. Basically what you do is you want to sort of delay, delay this track by the certain amount. And we, let's remember 2.58 milliseconds. Okay, let's play it back. Okay, all right, let's bypass this, go back to zero. Yeah, see what happens, all right? All right, when it's at zero, let's bring it 2.58. Wow, you see? Noni has become, uh, uh, obviously, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, you know uh, it's because now it's more uh, phase coherent, right? You know, the, the phase coherency is, is uh, much, much, much better. You, you've got it uh, aligned already, right? Um, all the fullness of the bass tone, suddenly, you know, when the one before that, it was gone, it disappeared. All the fullness of the bass tone is now back in here. So let's check it out again. Again, quickly, I'll solve it for you, okay? So this is without. It's a bit thin. You know, some of that mid-range has been scooped out. Back with a delay. See, much more forward, a lot more fuller, right? A lot more fuller, a lot more bigger sounding. So we know that we are in the right path. Okay, so cool. Let's listen again now to the entire context. Yeah, I want to listen to the part with the drums, okay? Let's listen. Let's blend the amp track a little bit in. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do with the amp track is that I don't really want all the super, super low end. So let me just filter out all the... Yeah, basically anything, any below 200. Right, because you don't really want, I still want to keep the low end clean, but I want to bring out all the grit and the character from the uh, amp track, right, uh, into the bass amp. So let's blend it back in. Sweet, very, very cool. So just blend it a little bit just to give that a little bit more of that dirtiness, a little bit more of that dir dirty character. Okay, cool. Let's go back. Let's get rid of the in phase. Let's bring this back out again. Oh, let's bypass all these guys first. All right, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Brit 4KE, again, change it to the 4000E setting. Okay, first thing I have, the Wave C4, just to, again, it's a multiband compressor. But I'm only um, soloing and using the low band, right? So the low band, we can sort of listen over here. Again, I sort of like, you know, everything kind of below 200, about 180, 200 below, all right? So this is just to compress and control the super, super, the ultra low end, okay? Okay. Sweet, okay. Next thing, again, one of my favorite, favorite, super, super favorite um, tools, right, is this Surfer, Surfer EQ. So as I mentioned before, Surfer EQ is an intelligent EQ which tracks, we can track the frequency content of the sound that you are trying to work with. So in this case, you can track the root note, you can track like the octave, you can track the third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and it's a really, really cool tool. Let's see what it does in action. I want to go for... Okay, because what I'm hearing... Right, I think it's the fifth above, right? So let's see where that is. 
Okay, let's just boost this. Let's go with the narrowest Q as possible, right? This is very wide, so this is the narrowest bandwidth. That's sixth. This harm, this this frequency, all right? So this helps to sort of clean it up, and it's a very very powerful tool because as it follows each note, it will clean up that unwanted. Uh, in this case, the sixth, uh, um, the sixth harmonic, right, um, above the above root note, it helps to clean up the the bass 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 tone. Okay, so let's just leave it at that. Not much, just like two dB. Okay, let's go again. Okay. Now, one thing about uh, a lot of times scientists with the synth and programmed basses is that they can be a little bit, um, the, might be a little bit too much of the transient, okay? Um, so it sounds very, a little bit too much, too percussive, you know, too, too, too clicky. Um, basically a little bit too much of a transient. Uh, so I'm going to try to sort of tame that down a little bit. And there are two benefits of, of doing that. Of course, first of all, you will sort of allow the punch and the transients from the kick, you know, from from the from the drum tracks to come forth a little bit more. Okay, All right. So that that's that's the main reason. Uh, but secondly, again, uh, I think I want to enhance a little bit more sustain to 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 all these bass notes, right? Because you know, with again with program with program stuff, sometimes the release, you know, the, the note doesn't sustain as long as naturally as when you're playing a real um, bass guitar, you know? Because the real bass guitar has got all that noise, all that dirtiness, all that grit that that we associate. That when we hear it, we feel like, oh, you know, wow, this this feels alive. So let's do it by you know bringing up all that gritty, 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 grittiness. Okay, so let's let's try it. Okay. So one of my favorite tools is to use the uh, 1176 compressor. Uh, the revision A is the blue stripe, all right? So this one has got a little bit more character in it. Let's check it out. Yeah, all right. This is very, very mild. Let's, 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 let's give it a fast attack and see. Oh, listen in context with the drums, okay? Let's listen to in context with the drums. Let's put it in the chorus so that we... Well, let's put it at the end chorus so we know how it goes. All right, listen with the drums. Yeah, I like what it does because it helps to seat the the bass a little bit um, a little bit underneath so that the bass doesn't poke out too much so that the transients don't poke out so much that gives the the the, the drums the space where it needs to to have the, the punch and the transients you see let's pull this up Very cool. Yeah, you know, so to me, you know, it bring, it helps to bring up all that sustain, uh, all that. So again, let's if I bypass the bass amp, right, right, and bypass the compressor, you can sort of hear how the clean signal sounds. Yeah. So now with the bass amp. the compressor yeah so you know it's just adding all a little bit more of all the the sustain okay let me just do a high pass again down there just to double sure double make sure okay high pass here at 20 maybe a bit a bit higher right because we're not dealing with super super low Let's roll off about 30, uh, 30 hertz for the bass, okay? Let's roll off about 30. OK, 
Okay, now that I'm sort of hearing how uh, how it sounds in context, let's bring up another baby. Okay, let's bring this guy up. So this is a custom series. This is a lift EQ for the kick. I just want to add a little bit of uh, sub to it. Just a little bit, yeah. Just, 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 just a tiny, tiny bit, right? Just give it a little bit more of that extra, the kick drum, a little bit more of extra weight. Okay, very cool. So there we go. That's our drums and our bass. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move quickly now. All right. So thanks again for sticking around, man. All right. You guys are really, really awesome. You know, spending the uh, Friday uh, evening together with um, myself. I uh, hope you all are staying safe, staying fine, you know. Uh, how's the uh, um, CMCO PKPB situation with uh, you guys over there in uh, in uh, Sabah, man? I, I heard that it's... Uh, I heard that the Sabah state government um, uh, is not going to follow the federal government instruction. Is that true? Is that is that right? You know, so that, you know, they are, they're going to open later, you know, uh, in... in uh, at a later stage, and they're not following following what the federal government's instruction is. I don't. Um, uh, not really sure, right? Um, so maybe you can, you know, let let me know in in the chat, man. How how what the situation is? How's it going for 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 you for you guys over there? Okay. So while I'm doing that, let me just do quickly insert all the, da 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 da. All right, insert all the uh. Tape and console emulation plugins as usual. Okay, now three piano tracks. Okay, very very interesting. Okay, so uh, very very interesting. So let's check out what each one's doing. Okay, so this is obviously the main piano. All right. Oh, let me unmute the group first. Oh, before that, very very quickly, let me insert the group as well. Uh, okay, four K E. I should save this as a preset. Noise reduction on, right? Uh, the reason why I want to have the noise reduction is because, um, because when you have all, when you have so many instances of these, all of them add a little bit of analog noise because you are actually emulating real analog uh, uh, circuitry and components and and all that. So, but when you have a lot of instances of this, all these will add up. You know, all that little hits will add up, and you end up, you know, in your master, you'll be like. Psst, you have that, you know. I made the mistake once of leaving that on, you know, on some of the earlier projects which I worked on, and then you know I got a complaint, lah. You know, you know, uh, I sent it to to CL2 to master. Then he, he told me like, hey, your mixes are no, all got this hiss, you know. You know, so it's like, uh, oh yes, ah, okay, <laughs> right. So I've 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 made that that mistake before. So now I make sure right that not only not only there, but um 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 even on the virtual tape machine, there is actually a setting. Okay, you go. Noise reduction, right? Bring it all the way down, okay? And uh, auto mute the his the his. So when the track's not playing, when there's no audio going through, it it mutes it, okay? Otherwise, the his is gonna go. You always have that background noise, all right, over over there. And when you build up all the instances of those all those those plugins, you end up with all that his, you know? Hey, analog tape sound, right? Uh, you guys want to, you know to. Uh, you want that analog sound and and and, and uh, analog feel, but um, but don't want to pay for <laughs> an analog to mix on a large format analog console. Yeah, so this is what you get, lah. Okay, cool, cool, right? But technology is really amazing, man. All right. Okay, let's listen to the piano. Okay, so this is our like playing a lot of chords. Let's check out the second piano. What is the second piano doing? So this is doing like just a repetitive uh, on the right hand. Yep, just hanging on to... It's just doing like a pedal, pedaling on those uh, common tones. And uh, what does this third piano do? What does it do? Let's analyze and see. Okay, you guys can sort of hear that. This is actually, right? This is actually probably the thing distorting. Yes. 
So you be careful, all right? Always sort of pay attention to to all these sort of things, all right? So this is actually kind of overdriving the the uh, preamp here. So it might be something cool if you want, you know, to be a bit more lo-fi, a little bit more organic. But if not, oh, that's like an interesting sound, isn't it? Okay. But that's not appropriate, okay? It's not really appropriate for a pop song like this. So let's just keep it clean, all right? Bring the virtual drive all the way down. Right, so the third, the third one um, helps to support. They just to give it a little bit more. This is another high octave on the on the rhythm uh, in the choruses. That's very very cool, right? Because it helps to sort of uh, lift the when you get to the chorus, it lifts the whole song up lah, just by adding an additional layer. Okay, very very cool. What do I like to use on piano? All right, uh, I love to use me some good old... With pianos, I love to use more of a more transparent, a little bit more um, gentle compressor. So the one of the best candidates that you can do and that you can use would be the uh, LA-2A. In this one, I'm going to use the one from uh, Universal Audio, LA-2A Legacy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have... I uh, haven't got the... Uh, uh, haven't got the full update, so I'm just using the legacy one, which sounds good. It sounds really, really good. Okay, uh, just that I don't have all the flexibility of the the newer newer versions. Uh, okay, let's check it out. Just a little bit. Let's see what happens if I if I dirty up. Yep. Cleaner. Let's keep it clean, lah. Okay, right. So let's. I just want the piano to be a bit more clean. Let's give it a bit of EQ. Just brighten the guy up a little bit. A bit more three K. Maybe ten K. Hmm, not much here. 12. Bypass. Yeah, just to bright, just to, you know, give it a little bit more brightness to it, okay? Let's see where I might need to... Scoop out a bit of 200. Maybe... I'm scooping out 200 here, but now let's boost up 200. Okay, I still feel it needs a little bit more uh, brightness to it. So let's add this guy, All right? This is Revival. Revival is like a little exciter plugin. the way yeah it helps to add a little bit of the upper harmonic so all the way man yes This. Let me fish for some frequencies. About 1k. That's that. That's that const constantly a ring ringing a note at about 1k. Okay, let's go back and see. Let's try it again. Okay, right. So when it gets to this, uh, this, uh, okay, but 
you get Sudis pre-chorus, the the volume actually drops a little bit. So mm, let me just do a little bit of clip gain just to rig this up. About two dB, yeah. I think same thing happens here. Okay, all right, cool. So at the pre-choruses, uh, the volume here drops a little bit, so let's just compensate it back up here. I think it happens here as well. Okay, because it feels that like the energy just drops, you know. Okay, about 2 dB, not much, right? Just, just to compensate, just to make sure that it's all uh all even all level there okay uh make sure we crossfade properly so that it doesn't every time you do an edit you must always check right that you always crossfade it so you don't accidentally um you don't accidentally da -da 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 cause some digital clips or anything like that okay all right we can do it for time man almost 11 good okay okay now Let's let's just use the same, you know. Uh, let's just let's just go go with the same um, settings and and the same plug that that, that I used previously, you know. Um, um, if you kind of watch some of the mixing tutorials with a lot of some of the great mixing engineers, right? Very often they tell you if they're using you know if they use a particle processing for one instrument, what they do is they just use the same. The same setting for that, you know, similar part or similar instruments, you know. So if you have many, many vocals, you don't have to go and tweak every single one, uh, you know, uh, and use slightly different processing for, for every single one, right? This helps you to mix faster. And very importantly, in the end, when you kind of use the same and similar processing, right, it actually helps all the tracks and the parts gel together a lot more better, right? So let's just use it. I'm just going to use the same one. Maybe I will tweak the EQ a little bit because, you know, uh, because because we are dealing with slightly different uh, uh, registers. So like in this case, this guy, the second high part, might have to roll off a bit more of the... And cool, it's like a piano pad kind of thing. You can hear like a... You can hear a pad in the background. Okay, what I will want to do, okay, let's, for this main rhythm piano, right, let me just tuck it inside the stereo field, because I don't, like, when, you know, in a kind of a complex, a busy mix, this is not super busy, but especially in a very busy production, right, um, the piano, if it's like, I don't like it to be super, super wide, okay, I mean, um, when you listen to a piano, you don't want it to sound like the things like 30, 30 foot, 50 foot wide. Okay, I'm exaggerating. Like, right? You don't want it to sound like a super, super wide piano, right? You are l listening to a piano from, you know, from an audience perspective. So it's a little bit narrower in the in the, in the the stereo field. So especially in a busy mix, you know, I sometimes will tuck some of the piano a little bit in towards the middle so that you don't get such a wide, 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 wide uh, stereo image going on. Cool. Sweet, let's go on with this guy. So this guy is, uh, as I said, this one is an extra layer to just give more weight in the core. Same. Let's let's roll off all that low end. Interesting. Actually, let's uh, let's play around with the tone on this guy a little bit. I want to make it sound a little bit more. Rhodesy, I would say. Okay, 
turn it into something that sounds more of a Rhodes, let, let me just roll off all that high end first. So it's a bit more mid rangey. And now in context, we listen to everything. Again, maybe this is where, you know, a little bit of the distortion, a little bit of the saturation will help. Let's see. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Okay, let's find something else to, to, uh, to, to give it a little bit more uh, character. And let's go with uh, da, 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 da. let's go with something that's uh, freely, 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 freely available. Where is it? Huh? I need to look for it. Oh yes, there it is. Um, now you can also check it out. This is also free. Where is soft tube? I can't find it. I can't find it. Where did it go? Okay, I'm trying to look for it. Trying to look for it, trying to look for it, trying to look for it, trying to look for it. Soft tube, oh my god. My eyes, man. It's like, okay, uh, this happens when you're pushing 40 lah, okay? Okay, all right. So, under soft tube, I think if you go and check it out on their, on their website, all right, uh, this plugin called the Saturation Knob. Please appear. There you go. Okay, Saturation Knob is available free so this is also in any another type of a uh, saturation uh, uh plugin which you can sort of use uh. so uh, i'm gonna try and use this on the piano and let's see on the on this piano layer and let's see what what happens okay so similarly right with what happens when i drive the fg73 also you get a little bit of that overdrive and saturation but this one's a little bit different because it can also have a it has a different type. So maybe I don't want to saturate the top and the treble, you see. So uh, I think what we do is it goes into one of these settings. Maybe what's happening is okay. Let me turn off turn off this EQ first. Let's see what and see what happens. Yep. So maybe I don't need I don't need I don't need the EQ. All right. Let's listen in contact. Still sounds a bit too distorted though. Oh, hi, hi in the chat. Hello, hi Jen. Hello, Shazli, Mr. Shazli Zalsham, also known as DJ Uno, my man, my DJ. Thanks for joining in, man, in the chat, man. Thank you so much. Hello there. All right, thanks for joining in on this uh, Friday, Friday evening. Okay, now, so we've gone down this little. Uh, uh, this little path that I was trying to do, right? Trying to figure out a way to give it a little bit more character and use add saturation, and uh, looks like it's it's a bit of a dead end now. You know, I've tried using a different um, 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 saturation plugin, but uh, the result is kind of same. You know, it gets a bit too distorted and too too saturated. So sometimes this happens. You know, when you are you are mixing, you are you know experimenting. You're trying something new. You um, are like blazing a path down this pathway, you know, trying to find find your way to 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 your final destination, but you hit a roadblock, and it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly okay. It it happens to everyone, you know. It happens to happens to you. I'm sure it happens to Bob Clear Mountain. Uh, you know, oh, you know, the best mixer in the world, right? It happens to 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 everyone, and it happens to me, right? So you ever find yourself in this kind of situation? Right, it's okay. Don't 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 be discouraged, right? You know, so maybe what you wanna do, right, is let's let's go back, let's go back to square one then. All right, go back to square one. 
let's bring back out let's 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 forget about all the saturation thingy and maybe what we'll do now is let's just use good old compression uh da -da -da. let's compress the heck out of this piano part and see how it sounds maybe you know maybe this will work i'm going to switch this to the limiter mode cuz this will be uh this one, the attack, the attack is going to be a lot more aggressive. So basically, it means it's going to be a much more aggressive compression. Okay, let's see. Cool. I think this is what it. I think this is what he needs, lah. Right, not all the saturation and and all that just needs a little bit more of com compression just to bring out a little bit more of uh, energy. It's still a little bit spiky for me, and maybe that's because you know uh, because an optical compressor like an LU two A attack the attack time is a little bit slower. You know, it responds a little bit slower than let's say in, in eleven seventy six. So maybe maybe okay. Let's leave that in. Let's leave that in. Maybe all it needs is to slap on something fast, a fast, 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 fast compressor like an 1176. And uh, let's just use the Slate Digital model. In this case, they have a, they have a few, right? Similar like 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 you see when I was using the bass, I was using the Universal Audio one. Like Slate Digital also has theirs. I'm gonna go for the modern because the modern will be the most cleanest, the mostest cleanest. Okay, pardon my uh, English. Right, the cleanest uh, of the um, uh, 1176 uh, models, uh, right? So I just want to take the, that edge off the piano because it's a bit spiky now, right? It's a bit spiky. Okay. Let's change another circuit. Let's bring the release down there. Again. Bypass. Let's bring the mix down. 70 percent. Maybe a higher ratio. Let's put eight. Oh, that's better. Let's go twelve. Twelve to one. Let's go twenty. I like it. I like 20. Alright. So this is like pretty aggressive and it's pumping a little bit now. It's pumping a little bit because you can hear the note starts to bloom a little bit uh, after the initial uh, attack of the chord. Let's listen to how it sounds in context, okay? Let's just listen to it. I, I like the vibe, you know, it's it's cool, right? Again, you know, when you're dealing with a little bit like sample and when you're dealing with program sounds, you want to add in all that uh, wrongness, right? You want to add all the, uh, you want to add, uh, add all that wrongness, all that, all the randomness, the variety, the, the variations, just to give it a little bit more life, okay? Let's check it out. Okay, and to make it even more interesting, I'm going to pan this baby a little bit more to the right. Okay, so now, with pianos, all right, uh, the question of perspective is also very, very important. Okay, so if you're sitting, if you're a piano player and you're sitting in front of a piano, right, naturally, all the bass notes, the bass strings are all going to be your left hand, right? Left hand. So naturally, you want all the lower frequency, the lower notes to be on the left hand side. You want to you want to keep it on the left-hand side of the stereo field. And uh, inversely, all right, on your right-hand side, uh, on the on the right will be all the higher notes and upper notes, okay? So, so this one is more towards like a, a upper mid, higher note register, so I'm going to pan it to the right, okay? All right. So generally, that's the rule of thumb when you when you are looking and you're working with pianos, all right? But again, rules are there and they're meant to be broken. If you want to be super creative, you want to put a high 
you know, like a high piano part all the way to the left hand side. Go ahead, man. There's nothing wrong. You know, you know, there's not, not nothing wrong in in uh, in doing so if it works for for the song. So let's put it slightly to the right. All right, man. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Unu, for, for jumping in. Okay, I like it. All right, so I like what, what we have right now. Okay, cool. Now, uh, we've still got some guitars and keys, but I'm actually going to skip all those first, right? And uh, the very good reason why is that, you know, uh, look, in the mix, in the mix, uh, and I've mentioned this time and time again, every episode I always repeat the same thing, you know, I, it's like I'm like a broken, uh, broken record player by, by, by now, right? Uh, I won't use the word broken CD actually because I think it's getting harder and harder to find CD players. But very funny enough, you know, because record players uh, and and vinyl records are back, you know, in in vogue, you know, maybe people will understand. You know, broken record player. So I've been repeating this over and over again. For vocals are the most important thing. So instead of going through all and going to all the instrumentation very quickly after I've got the drums, the bass, and the main rhythmic instrument there, which is in this case the piano, once I have that up already, I'll move on to the vocals right away, all right? I want to make the vocals sound great, I want to make it sit in a mix really, really well, and uh, and and only after that do I introduce the rest of the instruments, because the rest of the instruments are there to support the vocal, to support the mix. Now, if I were to do the other approach, I'll put all the music first, I'll EQ everything so nicely, you know, everything's perfect, the music is like perfect already. Very often what happens, right, the problem is that you find that you're going to have to work really, really hard. You're going to have to apply a lot of processing. You have to apply, you know, maybe more processing than usual to make that vocal um pop out and to stand stand out in in uh out of all the instruments right and end result is like mm, you know you have to apply too much compression then or too much eq too much too much of everything you know you have to overcook the vocal so so by doing this right you make sure that the vocal remains the focus of the mix right the focus of the main production that's what sells the song anyway the vocal the melody then and 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 and, and the lyrics not the fancy guitar parts or the keyboard parts or the technical string arrangement or whatsoever, right? It's the vocal. That's the thing which your listener and your fans are going to be humming and they're going to be singing that. That's the, that's the thing that they remember. That's the thing that draws them back to listening to the song over and over again. Not uh, not all the small details, okay? All right, so don't sweat all the small details. So let's go into the vocal and let's listen to Velvet's vocal first, right? Amazing singer, you know. Uh, I, I've I've uh, not only had the opportunity to mix on a couple of her tracks as well, but you know, uh, amazing singer. Not not just not just in the studio, but I would dare to say she she sounds. Uh, and I've heard people refer to it, right? So, oh, Rich, don't take this and don't don't take this wrong. She actually sounds even better live, right? Which I think is a is a good compliment. Right, so if you watch watch her live videos and when you know when when she's singing, not only back in the uh, AF days, but you know some of the most re her recent concert. I think uh, uh, you guys did like uh, she 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 did a concert uh, back in Sabah. Was it a couple of years back? Right, when I watch back the footage from that, it's like she sounds amazing live, man. Right, live is like wow, fantastic. You know, she sounds really really amazing. So let's listen to Velvet's vocal, okay. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri hmm. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri Tangis yang tulis tenang saja ku kan bersamamu hmm. Dunia tidak akan berakhir di sini Tak harapkan kelihatan Suatu hari Aku, kamu, kita semua tempuhi Walau apapun yang terjadi So that's the verse and the pre-chorus pre Sweet, man. Really, really amazing. 
sounding vocals, you know, uh, such a beautiful tone and, and all that. Okay, uh, so let's go with the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my usual vocal processing chain. Uh, and that is the, let's, where we go. All right, the Hollywood VMA Vogue Mix Chain. Ta-da! Okay, cool. Right, let's bypass it. All right, just a very quick overview of what I have. Right, this is a TDR Nova. It's a dynamic EQ. Okay, same thing, virtual tape machine, virtual mix rack. And let me switch it to, again, the 4KE. So the, the thing that's slightly different here compared to uh, what I put on the other tracks is that Instead of the FG73, I put this one. This is the Hollywood um, Virtual Tube Collection um, um, preamp. So this one has a little bit. The, the 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 they have three. They have the Hollywood. They have the the London, and they have the one more. What is it called? What you call it? What you call it? Hollywood, London, and New York. Yes, Hollywood, London, and New York. Okay. So each of them have a slightly different flavor, lah, right? But they generally have a lot more character than the uh, uh, than the FG seventy three and the other preamp models. So I like to use this on on vocals, all right? But the other thing which I really really love and I use it on almost every vocal is uh, this guy here. This is FG stress. This is the model of the uh, empirical labs distressor. But what I have this is I have a setting that's uh, gonna be doing a little bit of parallel procession. Right, so this is called the parallel nuke. Right, so there is a setting in here. If you if you take a look, if I press the ratio, it goes from uh one to one, two to one, three to one, four, six, ten, twenty, and the extreme setting is called the nuke. You nuke the setting, so this is like you know it's almost working like a like a limiter lah, basically. Okay, so when I have this, uh, I have this as parallel process. So you know uh with the mix knob. You know, I can start at about 50-50. So 50%, I have the the uh, signal uh, is going to be going through the compressor. And it's going to be processed. And 50% of it is going to be the raw, uncompressed signal. So, you know, I can always, you know, uh, mix the balance balance between it. So let's take a listen, all right? Uh, before that, all right, a couple of things which I might want to do. So the verses and the pre-choruses, there is a little bit of... Um, uh, uh, difference in the levels. You can see the verses are a little bit softer. And when it gets to the pre-chorus, it goes a bit louder. So, right, what I want to do is I want to sort of even out. So the reason is, all right, the uh, reason is that um, when it hits the compressor, in this case the parallel compressor, you're not going to, uh, in the case that, okay, you've got it right sounding out for the verse, and then suddenly when it gets to this pre-chorus, right, it's because the vocal gets louder, suddenly the compressor slams it so much harder, so much louder, you see. So this is uh, just to sort of even out the gain structure a little bit, okay? So let's, here we go. Let me bring this up. So about visually about 3 dB. Let's, let's listen to it first, okay? All right. Aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri. Two, two dB ini. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri tangis sendiri tenang saja ku kan bersamamu. First verse seems to be a little bit louder actually, so maybe just needs one dB. Okay, one dB. Ku kan bersamamu. Same thing here, ini. Yeah, see? So, you know, the transition, you know, the level, the the, the gain structure between the, the, the verse and the pre-chorus now is a lot more even. Okay, so now let's go back to this. Go back to Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri mm-hmm. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri tangisan pilu tenang saja ku kan bersama mu. Yes, okay, perfect. Right, it's a lot, lot better right now. Okay, so a couple of things that I want to do, uh, work on first. I'll show you what's the first thing I do when I when I uh, process vocals. First guy is the star of the show, right? Uh, he's there on every um every, every almost every episode. This guy gets featured, all right? 
it's like a character in The Walking Dead that never dies, lah. It's like, well, what's what's his character? The the the, I I, I never I never watch it series, but there's that there's the guy who, uh, uh, that's played by Norman Reedus, right? That character, he like he never dies, lah. Every episode, every season, he's still alive, right? No matter what happens, right? So this guy is is that, right? So TDR Nova is a parallel dynamic equalizer. Right, so a dynamic equalizer is a basically it's a frequency specific compressor. So you can dial in, uh, so that the compression only acts at a specific range or a specific uh frequency and across you know several bands of data. So it makes for a very 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 powerful, um, very powerful uh, processor. You can use it like a normal regular four band uh, EQ parametric EQ. But the most um, powerful f uh, feature of this is the parallel dynamic EQ, la, the dynamic EQ uh, section. So uh, this is free, by the way. Okay, it's free of charge. Go and check out. All right, I have put the link. It's down in the description to where you can download this uh, this this uh, plugin. All right, the uh, TDR by the company called TDR Nova Parallel Dynamic Equalizer. So okay, let's let's get let's get on with it first. So. First thing first, I sort of want to clean up uh, and, uh, oh, I like I mentioned, um, like I forgot to mention, right? So when I do with vocals, there's actually two stages, right, of the processing. So the first stage, right, that you can see in what I'm kind of showing you now is what I call the uh, corrective um, processing. So here in corrective processing, what we do is we, I'm trying to look and trying to find and sort of like, uh, get rid of all the problem areas if there are any, you know, any of the um ugly warts, any of the stuff that that's um that's um uh that that's that's contributing that that's kind of you know bugging me, right? Stuff that annoys me, stuff stuff that buggy bugs me. So this is what I'm gonna do first, all right? So let's start with this. Uh, let's start with a half pass filter. Okay, let's just filter out all the the low low lows. Sempat aku terfikirkan yeah, tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri mm -hmm. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri tangis sempilu tenang saja ku kan bersamamu Ooh, I can hear a little bit of that saturation that's actually coming from the uh, the uh, the Hollywood uh, preamp so okay, let's uh, high pass at about one fifty. So, uh, but this is this is a gentle slope, bro, guys. This is a very gentle slope. This is like a twelve dB per octave uh, slope. Okay, let's listen to it again. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri. Hitam putih. Okay, I'm hearing one sort of resonance, right? That that's coming, and that can be usually it it can be uh, usually it's either from the room, sometimes the mic itself, sometimes the microphone, right? The the body of the microphone sometimes will you know resonate, uh, especially with like you know uh, more lower cost microphones. The the body, the grill, the microphone grill that covers the capsule. Sometimes it will resonate at certain frequencies. Um, even things that are nearby, they're close by. If you have a music stand in front of you, that can resonate. For me, that's very, very annoying. Right? Uh, that's one of the most annoying things. And to me, to me, it's like you should, you know, if you are singing your recording, you shouldn't be having a music stand, right? Because having a music stand there means that you are looking at your lyrics. It means that you never memorize your lyrics. How are you supposed to, uh, uh, you know, perform and you know really emote the song, the the the, the lyrics? If you're still reading and referring to it, it should already be, all right, um, something that you already memorize. It has, you know, you really memorize and know the words and know the lyrics and know the melody by heart already. Okay, but you know, again, I digress. Let's go back to it. So I'm hearing this low frequency, all right? Let's go to wide band mode as usual. My favorite setting is. 3.3 ratio, fastest attack, fastest release. Okay, let's solo it because I'm hearing this. Okay, Let, let's go fish for the frequency. My analogy is fishing. You go fishing. Okay. Around there. At about 700. 
right? So um, it's either, it, it could be many things. It can be the room, or it could, again, be re the resonance of the microphone, or sometimes even the res resonance of, of, of the singer itself. So, you know, it's always a different uh, situation for, for, you know, courses for courses, lah, right? It can be a course of, for different things. So what the uh, dynamic EQ is going to do is that every time that resonance pokes out a little bit, the EQ, the TDR Nova, is going to tuck it down. It's going to just clamp it down a little bit, right? So that it doesn't, uh, so it doesn't poke out, right? So the benefit of doing this, you can see. All right. So the benefit of of using a dynamic uh, EQ in this in this situation is that it's very transparent. So it will only, you know, reduce or cut that particular, your target frequency only when that frequency becomes problematic, right? And then when it doesn't, it leaves the whole signal untouched, right? So it's very, very transparent. It only works when it's required to, right? So it's, again, it's very, very powerful. This plugin is free of charge, right? Go, 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 go and, uh, and download it. So, so as you can take, pay, pay attention, so every time, you know, at, that, at the end of the note, there's that note that rings out. So TDN Nova helps to tuck it down. Let's listen in context. <laughs> I want to play around with the balance, the mix. Let's go jump to the chorus. So I actually feel right again because because uh, Velvet's such a uh, amazing and fantastic singer, right? Her dynamics, her tone, everything is so even. It's so well controlled. Uh, when it comes to when you when you have very very uh, you know experienced singers right so to speak, you end up actually not having to use too much of compression or too much EQ because you know their their dynamics are already very very even very very balanced. So I'm gonna just bring it down to about twenty twenty five percent twenty four percent. Yeah, just twenty percent, right? Right, just twenty percent of the parallel uh, mix of the parallel uh, compressed signal that's being compressed by the uh, FG stress. Okay, twenty percent. That's all we need. It's a bit of a peak there. Right? A little peak. Let's listen to. Bring the saturation down a little bit. Alright. Thank you guys. If you're still hanging around, still hanging around with me. Right? Remember, um, right? Remember if you sign up to become a patron, okay, 50% of the revenue goes to the uh, featured artists, okay? So check it out. The link is down there. Remember to use the code mixstream 5 Become a patron, patreon.com slash studio21105. Okay. Okay, cool. Now Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, um, uh, oh, wait, hang on. I haven't finished yet. Let's put that's the other things in my um, corrective processing chain, right? So this is a uh, wave sibilance. Uh, good news, right? Uh, wave sibilance is back out uh, for free right now because when Waves released it, right, they, they released it as a free plugin. They have just uh, announced. I think they are giving out for free. So just go online and go and check it, lah. Right? It's 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 uh it's on a free offer right now. Back again. So it's a very very fantastic um 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 DSer, right? So DSer, let's check it out. Let's go back to the verse first. Doesn't need much. She doesn't need much. 
Just a tiny touch of of uh, of the SR man, right? So on all the S's, the T's, all the high frequency sounds. So do I need this? All right. So this is the R comp, all right? So on my corrective chain, I have this. So this one, this guy is doing. Let's bring the threshold back up. Let's go to the chorus because I want to hear how it reacts on the louder parts. Right, cool. See, so what I have this uh, Arcom, what it's doing here, it's nothing much, right? It's just to catch, you know, some of the loud speaks, and in this guy, in this case, you know, just like a touch over minus one dB, right? So that's it, right? So that's the corrective, it's sounding great, you know, sound sounding good already, okay? Not having to do much because again, once again, fantastic singer, okay? and amazing vocals so now the next thing we want to do is we're going to go towards the creative stage of processing so how do we do that okay so let's do that i'm going to do the as usual the vocal thickening trick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this i'm going to send her vocals all right over to uh the effects channel all right so in this case this is the doubler all right so what i used to do it is this plugin called Waves Doubler, right? So it's a it's a double tracker, as the name implies. What it does, you know, it helps to create. You can do you can split the the voice into different different voicings, and you can do a lot of things with it. You can pan, you can delay it, you can you know put uh, you can detune it, you can put add modulation in it. But what we're gonna do in here, all right, is that I'm going to just work on the detune. This is the default um uh default setting, by the way. Okay, one important thing is that before we we do this step. Okay, uh, before we do this step, uh, where is my stereo, stereo, stereo? Where is my stereo bus? Okay, there we go. Before we do this step, we must make sure that we bypass all the master, right? And the reason for, for doing so is later when I print this effect down, what, what I'm going to do, you don't want to print it with all the EQ and the master bus processing as well because it'll all accumulate, you see, all that will accumulate. So bear that in mind. So let's listen, how does her vocal sound like when it's running through that, okay? Let's solo it. Yeah, you can hear that? It's like, it's like uh, not only is it like double, you know, not only is it like pan left and right, you get a left and right spread of, of her vocal, but it's also slightly, slightly detuned, right? In this case, it's detuned by, uh, let me show you again, okay? Right, so it's detuned by plus three and minus three, right? So I'm gonna be repeating this process a total of four times, right? So four times. So the first time in this case is gonna be a plus three and a minus three, okay? Right, uh, and the second time round, this will be a minus six and plus six, okay? The third time, I will switch it around to a plus nine, minus nine, and the last one will be a minus 12 and plus 12. Now, why am I swapping around the plus and minuses? Okay, very, very simple reason, okay? Very simple reason. Because if I were to keep everything on a positive, so if I do a plus three, then plus six, plus nine, all on one side, right, on this left-hand side, what happens is that it's going to, like, the vocal is going to go, like, on one side, it goes slightly sharp, and then the other side, it goes, like, flat. That's gonna sound really, really weird, right? So that's why you kind of um, alternate between each, each, each uh, time you print the effect. Okay, you swap it between your left and right. So let's do the first pass. All right, let's select the entire vocal. Let's select all of our vocals, right? And then we're gonna export and print this effect. Okay, so first of all, output uh, channel will be the FX channel, doubler. Okay, uh, you can use uh, almost any other, um, you know, similar, in fact, you can use a chorus, you can use a delay, you can use, you can use whatsoever, like, right? Anything that, that sort of achieves the same effect, you can also, use. in this case, I'm using the Waves Doubler. Okay, Project Audio Folder, so it will name it, I'll call it Doubler plus 3. 
wave 24 bit right away okay always import it back according to your project settings and very important you want to create an audio track automatically you will insert it into your pool uh. you want to create an audio track so you'll automatically import it back into your project okay right right so you don't have to go and manually go and find look for the file and then import it back again so while i'm doing this it's perfect timing all right this will take a couple of minutes Come in, while, while this is happening i want you guys to go over to the subscribe button over there please click on the subscribe button all right click on the subscribe button go and share the link you know, leave a like right now put your comments and your and your questions and uh, i will be back in like one minute while we export this okay and I'll hang out with you in the, in the chat. I'll do a quick run, right, to the washroom and back. Don't go away anywhere, guys. And I'm back. Oh, it's done already. So you see the first one. Uh, so the first one was uh, plus three. Let's do another one, okay? So let's double check first, okay? As you can see, there we go. This is the plus three one. Let's go now. Let's go do the next one will be, let me show you. So next one, we change this, the left voice to minus six. And the right voice to plus six. Okay. Let's rinse and repeat the process. Doubler minus three. So now minus six. Have some coffee. Okay. Hi Uno, hi Jen, hi Stefan. Hey Stefan, hi Stefan. Where are you? Where uh, where where are you from, Stefan? If you if uh, please let let me know in the chat. Where are you from? Right, Eldrin. Right, are you guys from Sabah? Do let me know, man. Uh, and Veronica is from Inubong. Okay, where is Inubong? All right. I really, guys, I really, really miss, um, haven't been to Sabah in, in ages. And I used to go there quite often for, you know, doing there like a one-off workshops and stuff like that. I think it went with you, right, Jen? You know, we, we've, we've been there, there together on one of these, these occasions. Uh, but, you know, it's n never had the opportunity to go back there again for, for a pro proper, proper, proper visit and a proper holiday. You know, me and my wife have always planned like, oh, let's go to Sabah, let's go to Sabah. You know, uh, especially we want to go like, you know, to the uh, uh, further islands like over in uh, Sandaka and Tawau. But then again, because our 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 kid is so young, so we found that it was like, ah, it's quick. It's going to be a bit hard to, to, you know, bring a baby out to the <laughs> islands over there. La. Okay, so I guess hopefully, you know, when, when this whole... Um, when this whole madness is all over, you know, hopefully, you know, we can go over there again. Right, uh, I can over there and you know get some uh, mitwaran, um, get me some kopi tenom, which I had a friend of mine bought for me kopi tenom once before, and whew, that was like that's like one of the best local coffees I ever had, man. It's like, I've, and 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 uh, uh, I've been wanting to to 
to look for it, but I think it's hard to find over here. La. Or maybe I just don't know where to look, look for it. Alright. Copitanum. Oh, Stefan from Penampang. All right. Cool, cool. All right. How far away is that from uh from 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 KK? Where are we now? And let's see. Okay. Plus 9. One more to go. Okay. One more to go. The last one will be minus 12 and plus 12. Now, um, I usually wouldn't go more than uh, doing four passes, right, up to plus 12, because once you start to get to plus 15, uh, plus 15, 18, then 21, and, and so on and so forth, it starts to get really out of tune already. So, you know, it's again, it's what we call, you know, you get to a point of diminishing returns. Like you do it too much, you overdo it, overdo it. It, it doesn't get any thicker. It sounds more weird and sounds more wrong. Okay, so this again is a it's a trick that you can do. All right, you can actually replicate it with a lot of different plugins. Can can also do that. You know, doubler plugins, anything that that that's a sort of a delay. You add some delay. You add some modulation. Even a chorus um, plugin can also achieve something similar. Uh, it's just a method that I'm doing, and then and the reason why, even though this is like a slightly longer method. Because I like to print the effect out, and it gives me ability to EQ the those tracks a little further. Okay, so you see, you see what what what's what's going to happen, All right? I'm also going to do the same thing uh, with uh, Rich's vocal. All right, so we'll get that get to that in a second. So ten minutes drive from KK, with the important you must put an important uh, caveat. All right, with or without traffic. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> With traffic, maybe 30 minutes? Without traffic, 10 minutes? Well, I've been loving it, man. Uh, well, now, you know, um, even though we are now under CMCO, traffic is still great. You know, there's not so many cars around. And uh, it's a breeze to get from here to here to there. It's always been easy for me because I stay very near. I stay close by. Uh, to the studio, so, um, so now, now, now it's now it's even easier with all the traf traffic. Okay, so now, uh, now, all of the vocals, right? Um, I not only I will send them all and bust them all to another group, as you can see over here. This is Velvet, uh, Velvet vocal, all right, Velvet's vocal group. So this is being sent here. Let's send it over there right now. Okay. Same thing with all the double tracks that we did. Okay. Let's. I'm going to do a quick link. So all four of them will be sent to Velvet Vox. So you can see if I solo it. Yep. All of them are already being routed over there. Okay. So very very quickly. Okay. I'm not gonna uh, check and analyze all all of these right. The double 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 parts. Just EQ a bit. Okay, what I want to do is I want to EQ them a little bit more, right? Okay, I don't need all the low end, don't need all the super, super low high end. Okay. Okay, right? You see, uh, so there is that, that similar thing, that same... 700 uh, hertz uh, thing coming up, right? So so it also exhibits itself here as well. So let's EQ it out, man. A bit here. Right, and then and a peak at about 4.4K. We can also cut that out, right? So let's just do the same thing. Let's just copy the settings over to all these guys. Same settings, right? You just drag it over and it will copy. It will copy all the fader settings and also all the inserts. Every setting you will just copy. Lah. Okay. So let's blend these guys in right now. So uh, in this case, all right, all right the, the vocal thickening is just to give it 
just to thicken the vocal a little bit. We don't want to sound like it's obviously, you know, having like a kind of a chorus or a doubling effect over there. So let's blend it in. Let's take a listen and see. Oh, very important. Very, very important uh, stage. Let's turn back on. Remember to turn all these guys back on first, all right? Because we must listen to it in context. Very, very important. Listen to mix it in context. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri mm -hmm. okay, Let me link all these Right, so it's just adding a tiny bit A tiny touch just to make it a little bit more You know, just give it a bit more size, you know Give a little bit more depth A little bit more of More of everything, alright Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri that's it, alright? That's all we need, man. So, let's repeat. Okay, let me delete this guy first. Alright, we don't need this. Let's rinse and repeat with Rich's vocal, alright? Okay, so Rich, so now you're going to be listening to your own voice, man. Okay, so, back to the same, um, same, uh, same principles. Let's use the same... Um, Processor, let me bypass this first. And da, da, da. let's let's listen to it, okay? Here we go. Okay, all right, all right. Sounding pretty good already. Okay, uh, the the vocal was a little bit roomy. I could hear a little bit of of um, the the room inside it, but let's let's deal with it. So, same process. All right, let's start with the TDR Nova first of all. Let's solo Rich's vocal. Let's roll off all the low rumbles. Okay, so how do I know? Like, how do I, you know, know what, uh, what, um, how much to 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 roll off? Now there are several several techniques and, and several several methods, you know, of where to sort of roll off and set off your your high pass frequency. Okay, so what I do is, um, this is actually more of a, the, what, this is like Dave Pensado's method, right? So, I find it very useful. So, what I do is, you know, what I do is I will roll it off, I'll set it off until to a point where it's obviously way higher than, than what it should be, la, you know, so that you lose, all right? So, you hear, of course, obviously, once it's about 300, I, I'll exaggerate it a bit, okay? So, all the low end is all gone. So, you bring it down. Right, then you then you gradually bring it down until you sort of regain all the body again. You you hear that all the, the low end and necessary body is there. And similar to what I did with the the earlier that, that plugin, the bark of dog plugin to to that I did with the toms, same thing, right? You roll it back until the point where you get to the frequency where the more you go, it's like mm, you don't get any more um, benefit. You don't get any more, you know. You don't you don't feel you don't hear the the increase in the size of the body already. So you already kind of know that's where you need to. That's where your high pass frequency is. So let's do that. Okay, alright. <laughs> Biar penat lelara sampah tak terdaya Esok hari akan tetap bersyahaya oh. So about there, 114 hertz, right? 114 hertz If you go any lower, right? You know, uh, the vocal doesn't get any bigger You know, it doesn't get any um, 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 bigger it doesn't, have a, it doesn't add any more extra body to it, right? So instead, all the the low end rumble is is coming back in. Okay, let's continue fishing. Okay. 
answer. Okay, same, same thing, 700 hertz, because you know, it's re you're recording with the same mic in the same environment, same situation. It will, again, the room, right, or, or the environment will always exhibit, you know, um, that same, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word problem, this, it will exhibit the same anomaly, right, all right, anomaly. All right, so that anomaly here is at 700 hertz. Susah senang kita. Oh, that's a, let's take out the gain first, zero out the gain, bring the threshold down. Kita harungi bersama-sama, ku pasti kita dapat melakukannya. Oh, Much better. Biar penat lelah, rasa hampa tak terjaya, esok hari akan ter... Okay, cool. Let's move on to the chorus part again, okay? because again, we want to hear how all this reacts. Uh, actually, no, just pre-chorus will do. I want to hear how it reacts with all the uh, different parts. Okay, right. So here, uh, when when uh, Rich gets to the higher register, okay, right, and because uh, this is like a slightly higher register for, for the male male voice, you get you do get a little bit of the uh uh harsh resonance here. So let me see. Let's 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 let let me loop this section. Okay. And it's perfect it's perfectly normal. You know, every every vocal, every voice will always, you know, uh have that same thing. Whenever you are at your higher range of your frequency, you know, you always get a little bit of that uh, resonance there. So let's look for it. Okay. About 4.8, 4.9k, right? So with every voice, with every vocal, every person every has, has that different uh, uh, res resonant frequency, okay? Um, that's also very important consideration with the microphone choice, right? So that's why, you know, if you go to like a big Hollywood studio, they have so many microphones to choose from, right? Because uh, you want to pick the microphone that, that best suits, that best suits your voice, you see, right? Because uh, not necessarily you have a very expensive, like, uh, wow, Telefunken uh, M251, which costs like 20, 30,000 uh, ringgit. You can buy a uh, car, car for that price, really. Not necessarily the most expensive mic will sound the best for a particular voice, particular vocal, okay? Right, so that's why mic matching is also very important. Right, you need your mic microphone selection. Choosing the right microphone for voice is important as well. Okay, let's let's bring that down. Okay, for this one, I would go slightly wider bandwidth, right? Because you want it to be a bit more gentle, right? Okay. Okay, just a little bit, right? So a wider bandwidth, lah, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound too, uh, it sounds a little bit more musical, okay? Uh, back to this guy, Sibilance. Uh, let me just check again with the, with the uh, FG stress, all right? Susah senang kita harungi bersama-sama Ku pasti kita dapat melakukannya Oh, too much. biar penat lelah rasa hampa tak terjaya Esok hari akan tetap bersyahaya Oh, okay cool, about 35% right? Slightly more Okay, sibilance, sibilance, sibilance Okay, very cool, right? Just a tad more, a tad of sibilance, right? Da -da -da. And same thing, the R comp is also gonna be just to catch the peaks. Okay, not much, right? The, the max here, 1.5 dB. Just to catch the peaks. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. When we get to the core, we get to the chorus, right? 
No problems there, okay? Right? No, no problems there. Because, because, um, which which starts to sing the harmony, right? The 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 harmony to the chorus. So, I I don't think feel I don't really need it to be like oh up front all the time there as well. So it it fits perfectly well. So let's do the same thing what we did earlier with uh, Velvet's vocals. Let's make it thicker. Let's make it thick like the Dalgona coffee, which is like super um uh my uh, goddaughter made 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 a cup of uh dagona coffee and try and i tried it at home honestly i uh, maybe it's a recipe or you know how she made it but well, i was really not impressed okay it's like go on man <laughs> right uh well uh, you may disagree with me please feel free to uh, leave your comments what you think about uh uh, uh you know all that Dalgona coffee and all that, all all that jazz, okay. Um, personally, for me, I, I just good old simple, you know, kopi o or something like that is the best lah. Okay, maybe, maybe it's the boomer in me talking, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, how I wish, man, I could have like some kopi tanom, please, kopi kopi tanom. All right. I miss miss hiring that. So let's go back to the uh, yeah back to the doubler effect. Again, let's bypass the masters, and we repeat the process for Rich's vocals. Okay, so now I have to name it something else because you don't want to duplicate the file name. So I put our doubler. Da, 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 our double plus three and boom, let's go. Wow, such a unique voice. Hi, Fazat. Oh, Fazat, still stay here. Copy all the best. Copy all kosong. No gula for me, please. No sugar. Uh, do I have to confess this is actually a three in one lah, right? So, well, um, have to uh, be guilty a little bit sometimes. No choice lah. You know, this is like a three in one. Thank you very much, guys, for still um, hanging out with me. All right, we are coming up close to about two hours already. Okay, very, very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Yes, hi, Jen. Kopi tanam. Jom, let's go Sabah. All right. Uh, how will the flight tickets be like uh, very, very cheap? Uh? I don't know. Are domestic flights uh, back up again? Hmm. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been keeping track with the news, right? I wonder. Oh, Jen, by the way, uh, Jen has her show on uh, on the, the Tapau TV show, right? Is, is it called... Uh, uh, what's it called? Generasiku? Gen... I see what you did there. The Generasiku. Right? Uh, you have a show on, on, uh, on, on Facebook, right? Um, so, can, can you share with us, you know, what's the... Uh, can you share with us what what's the link, right? Sorry, yeah. Uh, um, this is actually supposed to be Velvet and Rich, but you know, Jen is special, uh, You know, so she can, so she can uh, promote and uh, uh, and uh, hype her own uh, content here as well, uh, Okay. <laughs> okay, Mahana six. Let's do that. Oh, essential travel only, yeah. But visiting. Visiting Sabah, you know, getting our dose of the oh uh 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 Chris always make Chris Pereira always makes fun of me my big prawns because every time we go there I must have the seafood and the big prawns. Uh, and and uh, if you guys remember, if you guys know the drummer named Michael Michael Chong, right? Drum Planet is he still in KK? All right, and. He would, you know, his famous phrase in the past uh, would be, "No pork, no talk." Sorry, yeah, uh, a bit um, non-halal here, uh, non-halal uh, live stream, right? Yeah, plug, plug, and play. I am, yeah, just just plugging a uh, uh, Jen show. No, it's just just can, may, maybe you can just leave leave the the link. Where can we find it? Is is it on Facebook? Um, not sure, not sure where it is. 
uh, you know, let let the chat know where we can uh, log in and tune tune into the show. Uh, um, to be honest, I haven't done it. I've bookmarked the the page, but I've not managed to you know sit sit down and and uh, listen to the episode. So sorry, okay. All right, I promise I'll do this after after this. All right. Okay, plus nine. Okay. Yeah, as soon as flights. Well, um, but to be honest, uh, for me, as soon as flights are open, I want to go and um, see my wife and my son uh, who are over there in, in Laos. Um, they also, uh, when in lockdown, their lockdown was just lifted about the same time, all right, this this week. Um, but very fortunate that um, over there, their number of cases have been very, very low. La. I think we only have like 19 cases in total and they have not had any new cases like in past uh, two weeks. But I do miss my uh, um, miss my, my family, my wife and my, my son over there. When flights reopen, um, I would wish to be able to go, go over there, right? But I wonder what all the travel, you know, international travel restrictions are going to be in place, man. Like if I fly there, do I have to like quarantine there for 14 weeks? Well, ah, uh, not that I mind, you know. Uh, if you know, I've got to be weak. Can I can self quarantine, you know, with uh, with with my fam, with my family, or hopefully, you know, over there because because uh, over there the it is a it is still a uh, one party uh, communist government. I, ho- I hope they don't like send me to some uh, quarantine center <laughs> and and never to see the light of day again. <laughs> I hope I hope I hope not. Okay, last one. The minus 12 plus 12 track. Oh, cool. All right. Sunday night. <laughs> it's every Sunday, yeah? Okay. Sunday, 10 30 p.m. with Edwin Raj. Another super, super good friend of of uh, of mine. You know, uh, he's done so many. Uh, he's been with uh, us doing the Pop Show with us. He's been our videographer. <laughs> he's done our music videos. All right. Um, very very cool. I will promise to check it out. And you guys who are in the chat, go out and check out um, um, Jennifer Thompson's um, podcast show, right? Uh, Generosity cool, right? Okay. Uh, on on Facebook, it's on the Top Out TV channel, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Please clarify in the, in the chat, right? Just 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 let 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 them know. Almost there. Oh. Hello, Roland. Hi, welcome, Roland. Where are you from? Uh, are you also from uh, from Sabah as well? Da da da. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's go back to. Let's go back to. Let's go back to. All right. Let's go back to my stereo bus. Let's turn this back on again. Okay. Let's turn on the master bus processing. So I'm going to uh, very briefly go and talk about the master processing really, really soon, right? Okay, let's do this. So same thing. Let's do the same treatment. So Rich's vocals are all going to a subgroup, another group itself here, similarly. Okay, and same thing goes for all the doubles. Rich Valk, all right. All right, so... Uh, Okay, later on I'm gonna leave all the all the links to you know to our Velvet and Riches material and you know to their social media and this Instagram. I'm gonna leave it all uh, will all be in the description, right? Um, will will all be be in the description. But one funny thing about um uh which is a Twitter Twitter handle is that your Twitter handle is Rich AF. <laughs> so uh, I think I was like. Maybe a couple of months ago, it when there was like a briefly there was a little bit of a meme, you know. So you know, rich ni kaya sanya because he is rich AF, you know. And you know lah, you know, um, uh, Gen Gen Z, uh, millennial <laughs> millennial talk, uh, they you know AF, you know you know what AF stands for. Okay, okay, so let's EQ the double track. Oh, 
Okay, this one you get a little bit of a lower resonance at about 400. Let's get, cut it out. And 4.7k. Da, da, da. Let's do the same thing. Let's copy the settings over. Let's make sure it's not looping. Copy, 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 dunum, copy, dunum. Okay. I'm going crazy, man. I'm think drinking thinking thinking about the coffee. Right? So this is going there. Let's link it and same thing, let's blend it in. Two, three, go. Okay, right, cool. So we've set all these. These are all the initial settings that we've we've got. Okay, next thing I want to move on, right, is the uh, what I have on my master bus, right. So uh, I'm using a new template. Okay, so the, it's it's no longer on the uh, all the past processing is no longer on the uh, master bus uh, uh, output here, the master bus chat, the master channel. Instead, I've sort of routed it to another channel here, which I just call the stereo bus. So here it is, right? So I'll very briefly sort of explain what I'm doing and what I'm doing. I'm When I mix, I'm always con uh, constantly mixing through these plugins. So what are they doing, right? So the first one is at AOC's Air EQ Premium. So this is an EQ, right? Uh, what it's doing is, is it's basically just, just um, to add a bit of boom, right low end boom and a little bit of fizz a little bit of that air right so there is this uh, setting here the earth frequency right earth earth calling all right earth calling jd all right and one more the air frequency right so as you can see by this little eq curve all it does is you know just it adds a little bit of that it's a little bit of a smiley eq la. let's turn this off don't really need it right but i usually tend to leave the air eq on right uh, very gentle. It's only one dB. Same here, also one dB. Very very subtle. Okay. So the next thing I have here is the Wave C4. This is a multiband compressor. So a multiband compressor, as the name implies, it splits the audio into several bands. In this case, the C4 splits it into four bands. It splits the audio into four uh, frequency bands, and it you can compress and treat and process each of these bands separately. So what I have is a, it's actually a preset called the Opto Mastering. So basically what it's going to be doing here is just, it's just to make sure that you don't have any particular frequency range that jumps out too much. Like basically that's what, what it does, okay? Especially when you get to a loud part. So I'm going to play maybe the chorus section right, and just kind of tweak and just kind of bring the threshold down. You bring it down. Okay, cool, right? So you see, they especially the bands three and four. I just wanted to just to I just wanted to just be dancing and moving ever so slightly. Okay, right. Next thing I have, uh, there's a TDR Nova here, which I uh, not use. It's just there for utility purposes okay what i have next is a virtual bus compressors these are you know for a stereo bus so again very gentle Okay, right. The way I've, that I've uh, set up this chain, right, it's actually three compressors. Each of them is slightly different. FG Grey, FG Red, FG Mu. But all of them are not doing a lot, you know. So they're all just doing, at the most, one dB of gain reduction, right. So I wanted to keep it very, very transparent. <laughs> So, you know, this glues, it helps to glue the entire mix together. It helps to gel and gives, you know, a little bit more. It makes it more solid and more dense, lah, right? Again, everything is super, super uh, subtle. Only the first one is like a 4 to 1 ratio. But everything after that, this is really gentle. 
1.5 to 1 ratio and this one leh this one all right the mu doesn't have a have a ratio it's a fixed fixed ratio okay so again super gentle See, when I bypass, that's bypass. Yeah, it makes everything, you know, just a little bit more forward, a little bit more energy, a little bit more dense, you know. So that's what I love, I love, 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 love about, about uh, using, applying massive burst compression. All right, uh, virtual mix rack. This is another instance. I have a couple of other stuff here. Uh, this EQ, it's custom series lift. You saw it earlier. Does the same thing, right? It's tiny, tiny, tiny presence and um, uh, low end boost, low lift and high lift. Revival, you saw this earlier. I'm not using it. It's not being used. FG Bomber is again another processor. I'm not going to spend too much time. Trimmer is just to trim if the volume is getting too loud, too soft. And again, another instance of the virtual mix bus. 4000 E setting K. And last but not least, uh, virtual tape machine. So, this guy in this instance, right? Um, again, we're trying to simulate how we mix and how we work in an analog domain. You know, as if we were working on an analog console, we were recording and everything was recorded on, on an analog tape. And now we also, you know, printing and mixing down to analog tape as well. Okay, so this is basically what it does lah, over there. Okay, da -da -da. I have a saturator here. Uh, only when I need it. Right? Okay. In this case, no. In the, for this sort of song, I don't really think I, I need it over there. Okay, so good. All right, so that's what's on the master bus. So let's go on now balancing and playing around with the vocals, yeah? Okay, very, very cool. Let's start with Velvet's vocal first. Let's mute, mute Rich's part. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri Okay, cool. Right. I'm going to swap this out actually because um, what I would like to use on uh, Velvet's vocal would be an LA2A, right? Because the 1176 would be a bit too aggressive sounding okay so let's 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 use let's use the alley 2a instead right i think i just need a touch of it I just need a touch of it, man. Only uh doesn't need doesn't need a lot, right? So just on the very very peaks, you see that that the uh the the comp the alley two ages uh acts a little bit. Just a touch. That's all we need. Okay, very very cool. So what I like to do next is um uh, I like to EQ into the compressor. Right, because uh, once I, uh, once I, uh, once we do that, you see that the compressor kind of it reacts in a very very cool way. Okay, it will react and and uh, um, on 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 a cool way. Okay, right. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go with the broadest bandwidth. Uh, with fewer vocals, I'll go a little bit higher. You go maybe to about eight k. <laughs> Yeah, it's bringing out all that brightness. Very, very cool. I like it, right? So I have now another uh, instance of TDR Nova in here because um, when you add all that compression and all that EQ, right, sometimes some of those resonances will start to get a little bit exaggerated. So it's useful to have just another EQ uh, behind here, lah, right? Post all the compressors, okay? 
Let's check it out. Especially when you get to the pre-chorus, yeah? Okay, there we go. You can hear that. Okay, at about 1.1k. Right. Uh, okay, let's get rid of that. Right, same thing. My usual 3 to 1 ratio. Fastest attack, fastest release. Fast attack and fast release because you want it to, uh, to respond quickly, but you also want it to let it go, right? Uh, to, to let it go. Okay. Uh, Disney, please don't uh, demonetize <coughs> uh, this episode because I just hum the melody. Okay. Uh, right. Cut. You want it to act fast, but you also want it to release it and let go of the audio signal fast. Okay. Okay. Da -da. Dunia tidak akan berakhir di sini. Matahari kan kelihatan suatu hari. Okay, sweet. Yep. It's all we need. All we need is that. Okay. Okay, now let's move on to effects. So what effects are going to be using? All right. So uh, first thing I would love to do, uh, those who have watched will know, I always like to put the vocal into... As if it's being recorded in a very nice, expensive studio. So what I've set it up is I use this uh, um, delay plugin. You can use any delay plugin out there, actually. So what you do is you just want it to have one initial early reflection. We're going to just create this little early reflection. The important thing is that you need to EQ it, right? So in this case, uh, I have high, low pass, everything above 1.5K, right? So you will hear how it sounds like, all right? Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau Right, you can sort of hear that I've placed it into a really nice sounding room. This is of course exaggerated lah, right? We just want to be just able to hear it. Jauh-jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri tangi Yeah, just to give it a little bit of that depth you know, you, it, it's, it's, it's as you can hear that the vocals inside a space, inside a particular room. Okay, let's go on. Next thing I love to add is give me a little bit of delay, 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 delay. Cool, all right. So this is a mono delay. Uh, what I'm going to do is that this is going to give uh, me a little bit of slap back. So let's look at the time. Let's bring it down to 16 note, okay? Okay, you can hear how it sounds. All it does is going to, is going to give a little bit, if it's a mono delay, to give again a bit more depth front to back, okay? See, when I pause, when I stop the audio, you will be hear it. Yeah, that, that thing, okay? Uh, uh, this guy's got a cool, the Rainbox BX delay is cool, it's got a ducking feature. So ducking here means that when the original signal is is uh, present, right, it actually ducks the delay, right? So in this case, you know, by about 20 dB, so that the delay doesn't start to smear and, and, and smear the, uh, blur the original vocal. So only when the original, the original signal has stopped, then order the delay comes back out again. So it's very, very useful. Okay, let's just listen to how it would sound. Let's play the verse. Very cool. Now, uh, I'm going to add me some reverb. After adding some delay, let's add a little bit of reverb. So let's go, let's change this because I have it a different preset. Let's go for this guy. Smoky Alto. All right. Right. So um, for more for female ballad vocals, this is what I like. All right. I, I, I like the sound of this. 
So let's see. Okay, where are we with the vocal? Where was rock? Okay, so this is going into the EMT 140, as you can see over here. Or oh, you can't see it because it's off screen. Let me drag this here. This guy, right? So this is a uh, UAD's um, model of the EMT 140 plate reverb. Now, a plate reverb is actually a mechanical device. It's a big as a device that takes up the size the size of a small room okay right but now of course obviously we have everything in a plug-in form so let's see all right uh i've sent it uh, on this fx channel so all we need to do is just to blend in the reverb all right let's see how it goes Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri Probably a bit more pre-delayed. Bit further. Yeah. Okay, very cool. All right, a couple more other things I want to want to do on the velvet's vocals. So the next thing I have is right. I want to show you. This is plugin is called Vocal Rider. Right. So Vocal Rider is a uh, plugin which, um, as the name implies, right, it writes the level of the vocal automatically. Just imagine you have some engineer on the fader, and he or she is able to anticipate all the volume changes and all the drafts voltages and react in like super super fast time basically that's what vocal rider is uh, okay so you have the rider they call it the rider is basically the volume fader over here lah, right that it moves up and down you have the range so the range sets the top and the bottom range of how far because if you you don't want it set too high like if your range is too high then it will do weird things, okay? It'll do some weird, 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 funny things which you don't want. Okay, let me tweak this to about six. And the very important thing is here, this is your target. So I'll bypass it first. So this is kind of where you want it to set the target for. Let's do it. Okay, let's switch it on. And you are able to see how the vocal rider acts. Okay, I'm gonna have to compensate that because it's bringing it up overall. Just, I have to calibrate, compensate the output by about minus two. Let's get ready for Rich's vocal. Okay, let's listen to Rich's vocal. Let's put a bit of EQ on it. Okay, cool. Some of the, again, same thing, similar thing, right? Some of the compression is going to bring up a little bit of artifacts. Susah senang kita harungi bersama-sama Ku pasti kita dapat some of the rooms coming out a little bit so let's do the same thing threshold 3 db fastest attack fastest release thanks guys we're still hanging around there all right <sighs> why hi charlister all right hi then thanks for joining in man 
Uh, where are you from, Shalister? Please, uh, please let us know. Biar penat lelara sampah tak terjaya Esok hari akan tetap bersyukur Okay, I apologize if you're listening on headphones and all that. Oh, all these frequencies sometimes will be a little bit loud. Okay. Slightly wider bandwidth for this. Let's do the same thing. Let's let's apply same thing the super tap. Susah senang kita harungi bersama sama. Ku pasti kita dapat the demono delay. Dapat melakukannya. Oh. Same thing vocal rider. Let's do the same thing, man. About six. So I have a this range. Oh no, is that too much? Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's set the target. Oh, by the way, you can either have it fast or slow, right? Fast will obviously be a little bit more aggressive. It works a little faster. Uh, and in this case, one is slow. I want it to be gentle. Okay, right. Uh, yes, hi. Is from Sabah. Which which part of Sabah are you from? You know, uh, in, if you are here, in the meantime, thanks for joining in the live stream. Go ahead and uh, click the like and the subscribe button down there if you have the time, right? While we're watching this, we are like, Pretty much about 75% of the way already because now we are dealing with the, with the vocals. Okay, cool, right. So now I've got the uh, overall settings for the vocals ready. Now just fine tune the, let's just fine tune the uh, levels a little bit, okay? Right, so okay, bear in mind, I have not put in all the guitars and everything yet because again, like I mentioned earlier on, it's very important to make sure that the vocals are working, that they're sitting there properly, that they are, you know, uh, really, that we, we can really hear the vocal clearly, that, you know, uh, uh, do, 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 do. the you know make sure that the vocals are up up there up front first okay so let's see I think uh, might need to sometimes with after all this EQing and everything might need to sort of compensate the levels so let me check okay let's let's go let's say when we go to the chorus <laughs> Okay, very cool. So I want to pay attention to firstly to the chorus because I want to get the balance of the vocal there really, really, really right first. Okay, now one thing when we get to the chorus, I will very often automate a stereo delay. So let's, again, uh, in mixing, we want to create dynamics, you see. So from the intro to the verse, then the chorus is always usually the highlight, the biggest part, you know. So we want it to always be more exciting, a little bit more dense you know you want it to uh and when you say dynamics wise not only just volume right you also talk about frequency you know a little bit more lower range a little bit more um higher frequencies you want it to be, have a slightly wider stereo spread you want it to be dynamically more interesting in terms of rhythm as well so this is where a little bit of subtle automation with with uh delays will help okay so let me just tweak the setting first let me set the ducking 
Okay, that's a bit too much. Let's go back to about uh, eighth note and eighth note uh, dotted. Alright, okay, so the right hand side is a little longer, the, the feedback. So let's bring this up. Okay, alright, a little bit more. Cool, all right. So again, the you change the uh, feedback levels uh, for either the left or the right hand side, because you don't want the right hand side to be still be trailing trailing on while the while 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 it's going on. Okay, so let's automate this. So this will kick in only during the chorus. Very cool, all right? Let's just leave it there first, right? It's a little bit on the uh, prominent side, but uh, hang on a second. But again, bear in mind, I've not added in the guitars and uh, other keyboard stuff yet. Okay, uh, let me go into this guy. Now, so this is MV2. I've not really used it so much, right? This is another of those stars of the, the show, which I almost frequently used on every every single thing. So MV2 is a it's a very special processor. It's a combination of not only um it's not a standard compressor. It's also a combination of an expander slash parallel parallel compressor kind of a thingy. Right. So what it does it does low level compression. So what we refer to as low level compression is that it helps to bring up all those low level, the softer details, right? So of of the particular audio signal. So it helps to bring it up, right? It helps to raise up all these these details. So um you know all, all the quietest quieter bits it brings it up without affecting and um affecting all the peaks. So I love using this on a lot a lot of stuff. It's really really unique plugin. Yeah, really helping her vocal sit. Sweet, okay. And as you can see, the automation for the stereo delay kicks out here, right? So let's bring it back in when you get to the last chorus. And right here. Check back again. Let's go back to the start, right? So going back to this start, this first verse you should be a little bit lower. Let me just check the level. Right? As you can sort of see here. About minus 3 dB. Okay, cool, all right? So I just automated the first verse and first pre-chorus. Okay, so that it's about minus two. Because again, there's not much going on. It's only the piano... 
um, the claps going on there. So let's leave it down there. But when it kicks to the chorus, it should go back up to here. Chorus. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the same thing. Okay, going back to a reprise of the verse, let's bring it back down. Minus two. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri. Okay. Bump up a little bit. Minus two, I think. Minus one. About minus 1.5, actually. All right. So you see, we need to automate all these vocal parts to make sure that it's always continuously in front, up front. You don't want to lose the vocal, the, the listener. That's why the listener always um, picks up too. You know, the, the, the casual listener is listening to vocal. So anytime that the vocal, you know, especially in a pop, pop, uh, pop mix kind of a um, context and scenario, if anytime you kind of lose the, vo the vocal, the vocal gets lost, you kind of lost the attention of the, of the, uh, of, of the listener already so you know and that's not a good thing all right and then back to the chorus okay when it's chorus back up to this level so roughly you can see this is what the automation is so what you're kind of seeing here these are all broad strokes okay so what i'm doing all this automation is, is all in broad strokes now there's actually going to be a lot more detail and fine fine uh, fine tune the automation which I'm going to do on the vocals, right down to every single f sentence, every line, and in fact even syllable. All right, even when it goes down to like even the breaths and the breathings and all that, all that's going to actually take place. But you're not going to see that because if you're going to stick around and I have to show you all that, you're going to be here until. You know, until the morning, okay? Until until next morning. So you won't go see that. I'm going to show you only all the most of the broad strokes, right? So very very uh usually what what happens is that after after this uh, the whole live stream, you know, um you we get a good overall mix like a first draft of the mix already, but there's still all the fine tuning. You know, those those are the very minute um, uh, minuscule automations, especially with the vocals. Word by word, line by line, I have to do it, right? Uh, it has to be done, done, done that way. So that usually, you know, uh, needs a lot of time. That's something that's impossible to to show and, and uh, to demonstrate in a live stream situation. Let me make another tweak. The very first line needs to be a little bit softer. Minus three. Because you know, because she's got a natural dynamic to how the way she sings, so in the mix we have to sort of, you know, make sure that we uh, take that into account. Uh, so that's why we need to automate automation. Same thing. Let's do the same for which is vocal right now. So getting into the first, uh, into the second verse. Susah senang kita. Okay, cool. When it gets to the pre-chorus, I'll probably have to do, to dip it down a little bit because Rich is also a very dynamic uh, uh, vocalist, right? So coming from a rock band like Estrange, 
All right, so you can hear that rockiness, that rock uh, uh, element uh, uh, creep, creeping in as well. So here we go. So when it gets to the pre-chorus, just to dip it down a little bit. No, pre-chorus is here. Sorry, this is... Uh, da -da -da. There we go. That's the pre-chorus. Okay, that's the pre-chorus. Very cool. So very quickly, let me do this. My 4.5 Just a tiny touch lower. 4.5 dB minus 4.5. Oh, hello. That's 45. 4.5. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, gonna automate the uh, uh, automate the stereo delay so that it kicks in in the chorus okay just a tiny touch right okay here we go let's disable first right automation Okay, cool. So same thing. It'll kick in in the last chorus. So we get to the second pre-chorus, uh, actually technically a third pre-chorus, right? It, um, well, and we start to sing in unison, so let's... What happens if we, like, pan it? Let's see what happens. Nah, I'll prefer to just leave it right up the center, right? Just trying to be a little bit adventurous over there. You just keep it, keep it right in the center. I think that's really, really cool. Okay, so those, these are the broad strokes that I've, strokes that I've really applied to, uh, to, to the vocal. So what we're gonna do next is let's go into the guitars, right? So this is very, very important, uh, element of the song, which will be the guitars. Okay, so very, very quickly. So there are a couple of um, guitar tracks which uh, Rich sent me. So the interesting thing is that all of these were all recorded, right, uh, with an acoustic guitar direct into the audio interface. So, but in the rough mix, right, uh, what what he wanted to do with these guitars is to get an electric guitar sound out of it. So, right, so how are we going to do it, huh? Right, let's start. Here we go. So first thing that we have here is a little kind of a strummy guitar. Let's listen to... How it goes, again, first things first, let me add in my tape uh, emulation and console emulation thingy. Let's see. Yeah, so this is acoustic guitar. Okay, so... Favorite things, one of the favorite stuff which I want to use will be the Overloud, Overloud, where you go? Okay, Overloud, THU Slate Edition. So this is fantastic. It also comes with the uh, uh, Slate All Access Bundle. 
And let's see what we're going to get. What can we get out of this? All right. So let's just go for, let's say, the Jangly Foxy Rhythm. So Jangly Foxy here, this is an AC30. That's one of the, one of the uh, my favorite uh, guitar amps. All right. Okay. <laughs> clean let's give it a bit of grit Very, very cool. So it's a uh, it's still a little bit of the uh, acoustic uh, guitarness uh, coming out of it, and I think maybe that's because we need to sort of EQ it a little bit more. So uh, let me bring in the TDR, and basically all I need to do is actually just to roll off the top, the extreme top and the uh, extreme bottom. So, because electric guitar actually, when coming out of an amp, has it's very it's quite a bandwidth limited instrument. So, let's roll off everything. Everything above, yeah, I think above six k, right? So y it's not like an acoustic guitar, which is very sparkly. You get all that spark sparkle, okay? So we can bandwidth limit this uh, guy so that when he hits the amp. Right, you know, you don't get all that crystalline, crystal-ish acoustic guitar characteristic. Sounds more like electric. Sweet. Yeah. And the great thing about the THU slate is that not only can you like um, go to all these are all the included you know there's so many uh, models of all the classic um, uh, guitar amps you know besides the AC30 you have all that jazz over here but you also have all cabinets IRs and lots and lots of effects so I'm gonna put a delay and where is it? Where's the delay? Where's the delay? Delay, delay, delay. There's a reverb here. There's a phaser. Is there a delay? Where's the delay? There we go. Digital delay. Let's put this in front here, okay? So as if, you know, as if you've got all these pedal board, this massive pedal board for you to play around with. So this is currently set to, okay, once you click on this, it will sync. So same thing, let's sync it to eight notes. There we go. Maybe a bit less tone. Eight notes. Maybe less top cut. Play. Oh. oh, interesting. What it gone? It went a little softer. Oh, because I switched it off. Man, I'm such an idiot, man. Okay, here we go. Less top cut. Just let the presence cut. <laughs> Sweet, cool. So this is just like having, you know, such a, a, um, a wide variety of different amps, effects, pedals and all that, uh, all uh, cabinets, all, you know, at, at, your, at your disposal. Now, uh, you obviously don't not necessarily have to work with this. I think even Logic has got its own amp simulator. Most DAWs will always have their own uh, um, uh, amp, 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 uh, 
I'm similar to plugins as well. So it's just this is just what I love to use and what I'm kind of demonstrating. But you can use this, you can apply this with whatever um, DAW that you're using, whatever software, whatever plugin you're using. Same principle applies, the same concept, concept applies. This is just a matter of having more options, that's all, okay? All right. So let's go on with, with the with another part. So again, back to the same principle of let's not complicate things. Let's kind of use back the similar kind of uh, M, M, M setting. Maybe just tweak it, tweak it a little bit here and there. So in this case, we're going to go into this part. Right, and this will be a signature part. This one, this one, all right. Okay, there we go. There we go. This is, you know, this this part is very very crucial, very important because this is where the all the element of the 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 um the signature, you know, Saba and uh, Borneo sound element is. Okay, so let's bring this in. Slightly less dry. A little bit more body. Do I need the delay? Let let me just play around. Do we need the delay? No, the delay kind of messes it up a little bit unless we use like a really, really subtle one. Yeah, so it's more like a like a slap back. Okay, here we go. Where is it? They're, they're coming up. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's listen in context with the song. Sweet, okay. Susah senang kita harumi bersama-sama Pasti kita dapat melakukan oh, Biar penat lelah Sampai tak terdaya Esok hari akan tetap bersyahaya When it gets here, this needs to be automated. Because obviously now it's much more busier, you know, so this strum part is going to automate it a little bit louder. 1 dB. Maybe less. Oh my bad, that's not 1 dB, that's like 3 dB just now, right? Yep, that's what it needs. Okay, cool. Now when you get into the now we're getting into the chorus, so let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay, let's check it out.
bad. Okay, not gonna play around with a little bit of this. Gotta have to make sure that they fit around. So again, see that's why we want to put the vocal. What that's why I would like to always have the vocal there first. So now I can sort of make the appropriate judgments. How, what kind of guitar tone should I be using? How to EQ it? How to compress it? How to fit and balance it in order to support the vocal? If I did it the other way around and I put, you know, all the guitars up. I would have no idea, no real perspective as to how loud the guitar needs to be without the vocal being there. So, you know, um, you can try it. It's not a it's not a must. It's not a method. It's just the way that I do it. You know, so I always try to bring in the vocals in as soon and as early as possible. So let's just play around with it. This guy, I feel like I need to compress it a little bit more. The rest, I'm not done any a lot of compression, but I feel this one needs to sort of sit there a little bit more because at the moment it kind of pokes out sometimes, and sometimes it's not really, not really jump coming, jumping out, right? It's not really, um, uh, not really cutting it. Uh. So let's compress this. Uh, for, for electric guitars, I love to use an LE3A. So again, look, look for something similar. It works as well. Some of the free plugins that I showed you earlier, you know, the MJUC Junior, the DCA13, all those. Those are all free. You can go and check it out. All right, but let's just use this. Okay, this one I'm going to compress it fairly aggressively. Let me EQ it. One point two K kind of jumps out a little bit. Okay, let's hear it. They got to roll out all that bottom. Okay, so I need to sort of emphasize that 1.8k region just to make sure it pokes out. Let's bring up let's EQ let's EQ the uh, EQ the symbols now because again now when you have um, uh, there's a principle which I always mention right uh, in mixing you set but you don't forget meaning that you've set a part you know whatever you're processing you've already done for a part which you've used it earlier right uh, you set it you move on. But don't forget what you did, right? Because you need sometimes we need to revisit and you need to go back to sort of tweak the settings again. So in this case with the symbols, I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna need to lift it up a little bit. Silky. Just to bring it up. Just give it a bit more high-end detail. Okay, right. Just automate a little bit. This hi hat here is a little loud, you know, especially when it's like in isolation. All right. Very, very cool. Liking it, man. You know, again, like I mentioned, you know, in 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 uh, in the, the times like these, you know, we need we need something. Uh, it's it's great to have a song which is, you know, upbeat. 
happy, cheerful, you know, because so many of the <laughs> songs that, that are coming out now during this time are all so, so sad and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, depressing. So kudos, man. Great job to, to Robert and Rich for, for putting this out. So you guys who are watching this are getting a sneak peek of how the song sounds like. Sneak peek only, yeah? Okay? For the real full one, you have to wait till, till, till the track is released, okay? Okay, now just automate a little bit more. Okay, bring it down here. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri mm-hmm. Oh yeah Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri Kami sampai lu tenang saja ku kan bersamamu Back Very cool. Just checking the last bit. All right. Oh, there's one more guitar here. So this guy actually um, sort of fulfills almost a similar function. Let's bring this in. Yeah. All right. Let's check it. Symbols a little bit up. Okay, that last crash might be a little bit loud. Yeah, bring it down a bit. Yeah. Okay, okay, sweet. So, that's drums, bass, vocals, guitars. Next last will be, you know, a little bit of these uh, keyboard parts here that we've got. So let's check it out. What is this? What is this doing? Cool. It's like a little bell-ish kind of a synth. So with this, let's do the same thing. Okay. I love to compress this a little bit. Let me just EQ it first. So we just roll off all the bottom. All right, don't need all that. And let's bring back the, let's bring back the MJUC Junior. Again, this is f- uh, totally free. Go to Klanghelm. You could just do a search, right? Klanghelm and you, you can download this for free. Get this one, let's see. Let's loop it. Let's put a loop. Let's do a fast. Yeah. Maybe not so slow. Let's go with auto. Hmm. Prefer slow, I think. Fast. Let's go again. Yep, fast is better. All right. For me, fast is better because it, it is it is actually um, catching some of the, the the transients. Okay. So in this case, you know, uh, this this helps to control some of the peakiness in this in the synth, and again helps to bring out the the tails the 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 the, the, the tails that that's that happens after that. So let's listen in context. <laughs> Okay, right, so 
I feel that uh, it alone isn't, uh, or maybe it is. Let's, let's, let's just increase it. Let's just bring it up more. Let's compress it a little bit more. Yeah, that's better, maybe. Is it in context? Okay. Yeah, that's all we need. Just compress it a little harder. Let's uh, let's give it a bit of uh, ambiance, right? So let's go and put the super super simple uh, sound toys little plate. You can just use any reverb actually. You can just always put a stock reverb to it, right? Just a little bit of reverb to it. There you go. Let's roll off all the low so we don't need all the bit more two two second delay. Great. Okay, so this second keyboard part is it's a more of a like an arpeggiator. Okay, cool. Similarly, right? Just roll off all the low end, low end, low end to it. And again, let's just use the uh, freeway compressors, right? MJUCR. Let's go back to this guy, right? Um, the the full version, which is which is M MJUC, right? Uh, this is the MJU Junior version, right? The full version, I think it's not expensive. It's really really cheap, right? Uh, so if you want to check it out, you try out the free version first, the the Junior. And then you can always get the get the uh, um, this this always this compressor actually comes up a lot of times you know um, men get gets mentioned very often because it's one of the best value for money uh, uh, compressors. Now the full version actually has got a lot more features to it, right? Um, it also it has not only just this one mode. You can swap to different modes, so it kind of emulates different different flavors of compressors out there. So that's why it's cons just to go go ahead to the Klanghelm website and, and check it out. Okay. So same thing. Let's go with a fast setting first. Again, yeah. Again, I just want to bring out all the softer, lower level detail. Let's make this a little bit more interesting, you know. Let's give it a bit. Let Let's make it a little bit more, slightly wider, a little bit more bouncier. And what I would like to do again, you can use this any uh, delay pedal. But what I want to use is the Cooper Time Cube. Okay, so this is actually a delay. Uh, it's actually a delay unit, and there's one setting here called. Uh, which one is it? Huh? Da, 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 da. Vocal dimension. Let's check it out. Cool. Yeah, basically what I want to do is I just want to spread the, the, the sound so that it's a little bit wider, you know, again, a little bit more interesting um, um, sonically, okay? Okay, let's bring down the delay. So now you got the delay going on in the left and right. See, ding, 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 ding. So it's not just not just uh, within the original uh, stereo field. So, so this is a lot more interesting. Overall, I feel that the pianos will need a little bit of love, so let's give it a bit of a uh, tiny bit of EQ. We are almost, almost there, man. And thank you guys for sticking around with me for close to four hours now. It's almost 1 a.m. But then again, uh, what else have you got better to do, right? Right now, right? Okay. Uh, thanks for sticking around, man. We are almost, almost done. I really, really appreciate you guys hanging out uh, with me and with also Rich, who's also in the uh, chat session as well. 
we are almost near the end. Let me just put out a little bit of EQ to this guy, to the piano. Yeah, all right, just need to lift the piano up a little bit. Sweet, okay? Just a tiny touch of that 3K just to bring the piano a little bit forward. Because now everything is you know, a little bit more forward. The piano felt a little bit too far to the back. And very sweet. This is uh, uh, a couple more things I want to show you, right? And again, these are all broad, broad, broad strokes, okay? Um, broad strokes to, to the mix. A lot of the fine uh, details are, is going to be done, especially on the vocal, all the automation parts. But it's not something I can show you because there's really no time. Right, because uh, it takes like it if it it would take like you know a uh, couple of hours more if I were to show you all the tiny tiny. But these are the broad strokes, you know, of how I approach, um, you know, uh, mixing a track like this. By the way, uh, bear in mind, remember again, this track was like written, it was recorded, it was it was um all recorded under the situation of the MCO lockdown, meaning it was not done at a studio, it was not recorded, it was not. You know, uh, recorded in like an expensive uh, studio with ex super expensive equipment. You know, it's just um, uh, using the using Logic and using stock sounds, stock samples, stock sample sample libraries, using a uh, regular um, uh, affordable um, c condenser microphone. Right. So it's possible. It's definitely possible. You know, to be able to create and to be able to. Uh, make great sounding music with relatively inexpensive and affordable gear back at home, right? Uh, so bear that in mind, it's definitely possible. And guitars as well, you know, we transformed an acoustic guitar, you know, which is just plugged in directly into into electric guitar. Again, with all the technology, with all the M sims and the and and that's 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 the that's available now. Does the 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 level of all these M simulators? Uh, are frighteningly very really 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 good nowadays you know uh it's safe to say you know this is how the, the way of the future uh seems to be going la, right but hopefully you know all the um uh all the real amps and all that uh so far they're not going away yet right uh they still sound better and they still feel better right uh when when you get a really really good amp and uh with a good good cabinet recorded in a good sounding room okay but again, just to reinforce, just to sort of uh, re uh, rehash that this is done, you know, by anybody out there who's watching this, you know, you can also do and you can also achieve the, the same thing, okay? Uh, bear in mind, of course, some of the plugins that I use, you know, uh, need to be paid for. They are, you know, from a more expensive bundles, but you can always replicate, rep uh, substitute that with, you know, whatever stock plugins and stock uh, uh, compressors and EQs or effects that you have, you know, it does the same thing, well, honestly. It does the same thing. It's just that, in my case, all right, I have all these different uh, um, um, tools available because it just gives me more options. That's all, all right. But, uh, I could very easily do do this using uh, uh, stock plugins, and some of them which I showed you, like TDR Nova, the Klanghelm compressors. These are all shareware. It's all free. You can all 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 get it get it for free online. All right, okay. Last little bit which I want to show you is again a little bit of uh, dynamics. It's a little bit of a trick which um, uh, some mixing engineers do. So what happens here is that I'm going to do right the master fader. Okay, here's what I'm, what I'm going to show you. So what happens is that every time we go into a chorus, again, chorus, we want to build dynamics, right? That's the biggest part of the song. That's the highlight of the song. You want it to be, you know, uh, more intense, a little bit more uh, dance a little bit more, have more impact. So one of the secret ways uh, the, 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 the the methods are doing it is just to write the volume of the master fader. So I'll show you, All right? Okay, uh, we're going to activate it. So it's going to write the automation. And so we're going to play from just from the pre-chorus going into it. In fact, I'll just show it here. It's easier to see, okay? Okay, here we go. And here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the automation's been written. 
So, so that one bar sometimes it depends on the song, lah, depends on the length, okay? But in this case, because of the tempo and the duration, so this is one bar. So for that one bar, you know, I ride the volume automation up by just a tiny touch, one dB. So what the listener hears, you know, impact-wise, is a very subtle in fact that, oh, the chorus seems to be getting a little bit more exciting, a little bit more louder, slightly louder, more exciting, more more dynamic. So it's just a it's just a trick that that's used to employ to just to give the chorus a little bit more energy. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at. Okay, and same thing. So when it gets out. Okay, then it goes back down. Very cool. So you dip it back down here. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me tweak this again. Let me fine tune this uh, very, very quickly. So one dB just goes down to back to zero. Okay. And you guess it. This is done on every chorus. So let's just copy this setting. Let's look for where the next chorus kicks in. Right, bar 71. So here we go. Let's go to bar 71. Make sure that the master track is highlighted. We've copied it just now. Paste. And yada, here we go. Now, okay, this is the last chorus, so you don't need to dip it back down. So just leave it back at 1 dB. So every time it kicks in the chorus, you know, um, not only not only automation wise, we the volume's louder, it's more exciting. You know, when you kick into the chorus, the vocal goes from like a mono delay, it goes to stereo. Um, arrangement wise also plays 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 a vital role. You know, so uh, Rich, what he adds, he adds a third piano layer here and the uh, additional guitar layers that plays a higher part. Again, this adds more energy. Right, you you want to manipulate the listener to. To, you want to manipulate the listener to keep on moving forward. You want to pull the listener forward while he or she is listening to the song, right? So you do that by by using all the tools that you have, your EQ, your compression, but very, very, very much importantly, you know, um, your parts and your arrangement plays a big, big role as well. So what it does, you know, he includes like a higher guitar part, you know, he adds that, you know, at the in the chorus just to make it a little bit more exciting, a little more dynamic. Drum-wise as well, you know, instead of going from the hi-hat, Pattern. Let's go over to the right symbol. So all these adds to dynamics. All these, all these little little things, right? Uh, adds up to a very very big effect, right? So very very cool. So what's left after this would be, you know, going to all the fine tune automation. Uh, um, not gonna show you, right? Again, this would take way way too long to to uh, show you in detail. Okay, um, but uh, um. Stay, what what I want what you guys to to do is once the song is done once we're out and usually it'll be tweaked and 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 fine tuned over the weekend once it's ready once 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 it's done um Velvet and Rich will definitely update your social media and and update you guys that it's out lah right so before we end okay uh, I want to say again a big 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 thank you to uh all the viewers thanks again for uh, joining and watching this live stream. Uh, do this every week, every Friday, all right? So if you've got uh, come in and you want to find out what's what's next, you know, uh, what what we're working on, what's the the latest exciting uh, um, songs or artists that 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 uh, that I'm working with, come tune in tune tune into uh, my channel every Friday, okay? All right. Before I leave you with with the one listen through, this is the first. This will what I call a first draft, initial draft of the song, right? Draft mix. Again, go back, do a little bit of fine tune, but it's pretty much there already, lah. In in uh, in my opinion. So again, uh, before we leave, once again, uh, if you if you like what you watch, right? If you want to see more of this, um, please leave a like down here. Remember to share this with your friends, right? Share this with all your uh friends of of uh, if you're fans of Velvet and Rich, please share this uh this uh, mix stream. You know, uh. Get a bit of excitement for for the new song that's gonna be coming up, and most importantly, if you can, right, go and subscribe to my channel. Okay, I really really do appreciate it because it really really helps. Bear in mind also, uh, remember, 
if you want to support the artists, right? If you want to support the artists and help support the channel, you can also sign up to become a patron uh, via this crowdfunding website called patreon.com slash studio2105. The link is right down here, okay? And when you join, okay, and when you subscribe, all right, and when you sign up to become a patron, please drop a message and, and indi indicate, drop a, drop a message to me and inc include this code MIXSTREAM05 so that I'll know that your pledge, that your uh, subscription is 50% of that will go towards uh, this week's feature artist, which is Velvet and Rich, all right? So please consider uh, to become a patron. Head on down. Again, all the details, I'm going to leave it down in the description. Thank you very much again for watching. Really, really appreciate you. I want uh, all of you guys to um, stay safe. Um, wash your hands. Remember, take care of your personal hygiene. When you're outdoors, always make sure you wear your, your mask, okay? Uh, take care of your social distancing. Really, really appreciate this. And I'm going to uh, leave you guys. We're going to listen to the whole track once through again. And I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Good night. Sempat aku terfikirkan tentang kamu Walau jauh jangan pernah kau rasa sendiri mm -hmm. Hitam putih awan biru ketawa sendiri Tangis yang tulis tenang saja ku kan bersamamu Sasa nang